Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ausvenskin Season Preview 2022. Thanks very much for your great support and feedback for the Elite Assyrian Season Preview so far. Now it's time to do Swedish business, and I welcome my friend and Swedish expert, Jonathan Fedugba, on board for this particular preview. And this, mate, is your time in the sun. You must be very much looking forward to it. Hello, Steve. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Yes, this is always the time of the year where there's a mixture of excitement, exhaustion, exhilaration. I don't know what else, beginning with the X, but uh, yeah, all the Xs because uh, it's a season preview. It's been a long, I'll be honest, it's been a long week and quite tiring. Um, as, as people who know, maybe who listen to this podcast and the ones who don't maybe know, we keep uh, a spreadsheet on every single team in, in both leagues and pretty much have a database on every single player and the research i've had to cram it into pretty much one week so this has been a really really hectic week i've been up at kind of crazy hours of the night uh looking at farberg boys players and things like that so you can't accuse me of being uh anyone accusing me of being a geek is probably it's probably going to get away with it on this week so certainly um but yeah exciting season starts this weekend of course and uh, it's good to be back it certainly is very good to be back and we will be going through every single team in detail uh, from the Osvenskin ahead of the 2022 season. For those who are interested in the usual 10 to watch, that will be posted on our Patreon page. So if you're interested in that, please do subscribe. We had some great feedback from the 10 to watch uh, from Norway. And thank you very much to any new Patreon subscribers as well. So I'm just thinking, Jonathan, this is actually going to be the fifth season preview you've done on this podcast for Sweden. It's actually We're actually in season six, technically, of our uh, lifetime of the podcast, but we started midway through a campaign. But, yeah, fifth time you've had to uh, do one of these uh, in-depth uh, season previews. How's, how's it feeling? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's number six, isn't it? I mean, we started in 2017. I don't know. Did we have a year without season preview? I don't know. I don't think the first season we did previous because we started midway through a campaign. I think. Oh, possibly, yeah. Mm. Yeah, you could be right. Yeah. But okay, it's yeah, season but six. Yeah, we've been going for five years. This is the fifth anniversary, anyway. May mm. will be our fifth anniversary of the podcast, and this is the fifth, yeah, fifth season. Yeah. Preview. Um. So, yeah, happy, happy, uh, half decade, my friend. It's been, <laughs> it's been a, it's been a fun half decade. I mean, I'll be, I'll be totally honest with the listeners. Um, at the beginning of this season, we had a long, uh. I needed a pep talk, didn't I, Steve? We had a we had a long kind of chat about what's the future of this podcast and kind of a debrief. And you know, when we started the show, my original intentions for the, this was I'd just come back from you know I've been in Sweden and been out there, and obviously I was going to the games and things like that. And then that passion continued when I came back. And obviously you're a Norwegian analyst, and, and we it kind of makes sense to do that podcast, didn't it? Obviously now we're looking four years on, you know, and I've always said that my intention was to kind of move back to Sweden and kind of work in Swedish football in some capacity or or be around it in some way but you know we did sort of three years and then COVID came along and, and it kind of it's, it's been hard you know I haven't been to Sweden in the last couple of years um last trip was to go and see Sean Constable at Bromma that was in 2020 and um yeah I did have a little bit of a down period beginning of this year where I was thinking you know should I continue it you know what I mean can I really dedicate the time and and, and the effort that it takes but I'll give you credit, Steve. You, you gave me a nice pep talk, and we've decided to sort of change a bit of the structure of the podcast a little bit, um, and that kind of partly explains the Patreon as well. I think it's time that we um, professionalise things a little bit more, and it will be m more structured. And in terms of my own excitement about Sweden, yeah, I was I was a little bit down on Sweden as well, just because of the, the amount of quality we've lost. But one thing I realised when I was doing these spreadsheets uh, and doing the prepare preparation for this season, there's still a lot of talent in this league. And it's going to be very exciting to follow the league, I think. And, and, and there's always talents that come up. I think one thing that's definitely changed, Steve, is that the, the length of time players are staying in certainly Sweden, and I don't, maybe you could say Norway as well, is it, shorter. It used to be a case of maybe you get a year out of them. These days, even maybe six months, you're lucky. Um, I can think of like players at Hammerby, like Aziz Wata and Mohamed, maybe who was there for around a year. Um, the other centre back that they sold to Belgium as well. His name escapes me at this moment in time. But there's loads of players who, uh, you know, Benjamin Negren, who was there for very little time in Sweden. It's kind of like, you know, it's getting shorter and shorter now. It's almost like that these leagues are now really, really closely followed. And I think with the Patreon as well, with our tend to watch, which has become kind of industry renowned, a lot of people kind of uh, 
do want to know about these young talents who are breaking through and stuff. So I think that was uh, partly the motivation for for maybe making it on Patreon as well to, to have a place for it. And yeah, I think um, it is a sign and indication that there's so much talent in these regions and and kind of people are looking at these leagues, aren't they? Yes, I mean, I know you, Look, there's, the last two years have been difficult for, every, for a lot of people, full stop, because of the, the pandemic. Life has changed. And in terms of our podcast, sometimes you can't just keep doing the same thing all the time you have to mix things up a little bit so we, we did come up with a plan and you know I've been there before myself where I, I wasn't quite looking forward to the the league as much it was about three years ago wasn't it where I was very much down on on Norway and I think you were at one stage this winter were a bit down on Sweden but you know things can change and I think you've got the the fire back in your belly again um Jonathan so you know I'm very much looking forward to to, to that part of it yeah, the fire is sort of slowly burning again, and and doing the spreadsheets, you know, I, it made me realise like I do enjoy, I do mm. enjoy it, and obviously being with you on the pod is something I, I I definitely wanted to continue. I think with Sweden, like I've said, you know, anyone listening, I, I've I've always been pretty clear about my intentions to return at some point. Don't know if that's still the case. Who knows what's going to happen in the future? You never know. But um, it's a league I love, and it's a country I love. So, um, it's definitely got a fondness in my heart. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to be doing it again. I think I think the ten to watch on Patreon is exciting. Uh, doing it in video format as well. You've got me out of my com- comfort zone there, which is which has been something new. Um, the elite one was good, and we'll see how the El Spenskan one goes. Um, but yeah, we've had really good feedback as well on Twitter at Nordic Foot Pod. Um, we've had some new sign ups, so thank you to the people who have signed up. We'll uh, maybe give you a shout out in weeks to come, uh, if you wish. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this this season ahead. I think it's going to be an, an exciting year. Yeah, rumours were it was it's, it might even be eleven to watch. You, you can't help yourself sometimes, Jonathan. But I do know uh, you are a man who likes to travel around a lot and things. And I think the last two years have been hard on you that way. And you, you do like a bit of Sweden. I mean, here I am like the Dennis Burkamp of the podcasting world. I I almost have a fear of flying <laughs> these days. I've not been on. I was talking in someone's um, chat on on YouTube just the other night that I, thought, I don't think I've been in the air for ten years. And there's this betting tipster I know who lives in Hawaii and I've been invited over there at one point and I'm like, I don't think that's going to happen too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think I need to fly somewhere like Amsterdam or somewhere first just to get my um, my mojo back for flying. I'm not like, I'm not like afraid or anything. It's just, you know, I've not been in the air for that long. But I know you you used to be certainly a very well-travelled man. Yeah, I do miss the, that that side of it. I mean, COVID's kind of uh, changed things a little bit, but obviously now it's it's getting a little bit easier. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I don't think there's any direct trains from here to Hawaii, mate. So uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get out of the Burkamp way if you're gonna go go that far. I mean, it's but, a nice place, right, Hawaii? I would certainly. I mean, it, it looks gorgeous. So yeah. yeah, once you're there, it's well worth getting there, isn't it? So uh... definitely. But um, yes, anyway, enough of, of my Dennis Burkamp isms here. We we need to crack on with the Asvenskin season preview and uh, 16 teams to do. And you actually had a good year with your predictions last year, Jonathan. I must say, I was quite impressed. You've got a number of uh, exact positions correct. So uh, let's see how uh, well you can do this time. And uh, well, take it away. Who do we, we start right at the top as usual? Who is your prediction to win the Alsvenskan 2022? Yeah, I was delighted because I think I think well, but in all the years doing this podcast, it was the first year I actually uh, predicted the champions uh, correctly. I got it wrong every year, uh, partly because I was avoiding Malmo, trying to be trying to be a rebel, and uh, in the end, I, I just went for Malmo and, and I was correct. I think I got ten out of sixteen uh, correct placings, which is a very good um, indicator that this might be the year it all goes wrong. So uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. But uh, yeah, top of the league this season, uh, I'm going for, uh, I'm going for back-to-back titles. I'm, I'm picking Malmo. Uh, I think this is probably a bit boring, but I thought about it. I did consider others for this title, mainly because of the managerial change. Obviously, the, the big news in in Sweden in terms of the, the champions Malmo is that they've uh, they've changed their manager. Yondal Thomason, who who uh, you know won the title in, in his first season, in fact he won it twice, um, and got them into the Champions League group stages. Of course, last season where they played Chelsea, Juventus, and and Zenit, uh, he left by mutual consent at the back end of last season. It was kind of it was kind of expected. I think there was rumours around for a couple of months that it might be coming to an end. I think the Champions League didn't help them. 
um, you know, kind of took away from their league form a bit and they kind of just scraped over the line in the end, winning the title um, just, just marginally, really. They won it by uh, on goal difference from AIK, you know, plus eight goal difference. So they probably would have expected to do slightly better, but I, I think the mitigating circumstances was, like I say, the, the European campaign maybe took it a bit out of them, the group stage. Um, but he, he's left by mutual consent. He can look back on his time with fondness. He said that, you know, he'll always look back on his memories of the two years really well. And the new manager came in, and that's Milos Milojevic. Now, he had a lot of controversy around him um, in back in the last season as well, because he's the former Hammerby manager. Now, he did okay at Hammerby, um, but he was ultimately sacked by Hammerby um, because he attended a meeting with Rosenborg at the back end of last season for their vacant managerial job um, without club permission from Hammerby. So it was a, a big uh, story, really, a big bit of a scandal. And he was ultimately uh, forced to leave the club. But he's landed on his feet, really, hasn't he? Because he's got an even bigger job than Hammerby, you could argue. And he's got the the, the, the champions of Sweden, which is the, the Malmö job. So it's a testament to how he's rated um, as a coach. And that kind of just made me, looking into him a little bit more, his background and stuff, it just made me think that, is it enough of a downgrade for Malmö to kind of lose... Thomason and, and replace him with Milodic and keep keep the level that they have. I don't think it is. I think he's a decent coach from all reports. I think he's had he's had decent success in his career, uh, which I suppose we'll talk about in a second. But um, all in all, I think that that downgrade they have lost some players, Malmo as well, which we'll talk about. But um, all in all, I just think they they've they've, they've done enough business that they, I think they'll get over the line and make them number one in the league again this season. Yeah, this uh, manager. Milovic, a Serbian, I've looked at his, his, looked at his history and he has uh, quite a lot of it in Scandinavia, Vikinger in Iceland, Mjalby, um, Hammerby obviously, he was also assistant at Red Star Belgrade for a couple of years. First of all, I mean, do you think it was the right decision to, um, I, I can't use the word sack, can I, uh, basically for the mutual consent, you know, John Dell Thomason, splitting with John Dell Thomason? Because I know that back in the last season, we often had a chat about him and we were like, yes, they won the league, but um, perhaps he wasn't getting the most out of the, the, the team. So do you think that was the right decision? And what are we going to see change now with the new manager? How do you think he's going to set up compared to Thomason? I think it's difficult to comment if it was the right or good decision because I think it's just one of those things in football. I think there was rumours that maybe he, he might be in for a job in the Netherlands. Obviously, he's got a big background in the Netherlands, you know, was a was a great player when he was there, um, and has also been a, a coach there. I think it, it's difficult. Yeah, like I say, it's difficult to comment on whether it, it was a good decision. But all I can say is that there was definite whispers for quite a few months that maybe they were looking to replace him. And when that happens, it's never it's never really a good sign, is it? You, you just get the sense that there's something maybe behind the scenes that um, isn't quite right. I think. Maybe from Thomas's point of view, you know, you mentioned COVID changing things for everyone. You know, he, he, he had COVID a couple of times, I think. In the first season, obviously, uh, there was no fans. Um, second season, there was gradually fans integrated. But, you know, it, it takes takes its toll, doesn't it, in that kind of environment? And he had such success. I mean, the Champions League qualification, the the, the, the biggest memory I have of them is when they, they, they beat Rangers um, in Ibrox. That was an incredible game to, to help them qualify. Um, they had to come through so many rounds as well of qualification to get there. He really did a remarkable job. And I thought he built a real kind of character around Malmo um, that I, I, I really thought was um, quite admirable. You know, he he uh, he led from the front as a manager. And I can't really I can't really criticise him, to be honest. I think that all in all, he did very well. Maybe it's just one of those things that it's a natural progression and, and he doesn't want to stick around. And I'm sure he will have a bigger office because he's, he's a big name manager as well. You know, he's, he's got a big history and big track record. Does he want to stick around Sweden? What's what's left for him to really achieve? He's already got to the group stage of the Champions League. They weren't going to compete in that. They never really did. Uh, he's won back-to-back -back titles. Don't forget, Malmo hadn't won the league since 2017 um, when he joined. So, he, you know, even though they're, they've won it so many times, you know, 25 times, I think they won the league in total in their history. Um, <clears throat> they had, they'd been in a bit of a, the doldrums for, for quite a while. So um, I think it was a natural progression. That's probably my bottom line on that. Uh, probably... Hot, probably 50-50 of, you know, maybe he didn't quite fancy it staying and maybe the club were thinking, you know what, let's let's change it as well. Maybe it's not quite, we're not quite satisfied because like I say, towards the end of last season, their their form wasn't great. And I think with the quality of the squad they had, they, they probably would have thought, you know, why aren't we doing a bit better? So um, that was the natural end to it. 
Um, Milojevic, you mentioned, yeah, he's got a bit of a uh, background. I mean, I don't know if you, I'm going to ask you here, Steve. I don't know if you heard much about him moving to Brisbane. Did you Did you ever hear most was that in Norway at the time? Yeah, he was strongly linked with Rosenborg, but they were linked with a lot of different managers. And I, I think after Chesil Knutsen, he was the main target for Rosenborg. Mm. I don't really know exactly what went wrong because it, it was rumours that he was going to be appointed or was appointed. And then there was obviously a, a change in tune and they ended up with a rectal. But um, I mean, I think he was seen as a viable candidate at Rosenborg for sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the controversy was that he was caught on... on um, these days, it's difficult to make uh, clandestine moves, isn't it, without uh, Twitter finding out or someone taking a picture. He got caught, I think, at an airport or just coming out of an airport or um, somewhere in Norway going to the interview with Rosenborg. And that infuriated uh, Hammerby. They really publicly criticised him, said he doesn't stand for the values of the club um, and just described it as unacceptable and, and his position was basically untenable. So... It's one of those ones, isn't it? You get caught caught going to the job interview, maybe uh, by your by your current manager, that thing. Um, and it's just not a good look. And it, ultimately, it was um, it was goodbye for him there. He's a 39 year old coach, Serbian. Um, he's done very well in his in his sort of career to date. Uh, he was at Mjalbi, uh in the past and was really successful there. Um, won, I think, back to back promotions, if I'm right, in saying got them from the third tier to the Osvenskan. And then he kind of left. Uh, he didn't didn't manage them in. I think he left just after they'd been promoted to the Osvenskan. Decided to move on. Um, he also won titles as assistant manager at Red Star Belgrade under under Dejan Stankovic. Um, so he did a bit of time there as an assistant coach. And um, as I mentioned, yeah, he went to Hammerby, did okay, um, replaced Stefan Billborn. Team improved slightly. Um, one thing I'd say is, you know, he seems to the ending of his times at club seems to be a little bit questionable, maybe. You know, obviously the Hammerby situation. I think at Mialbi kind of he just decided he didn't want to stick around, which you'd have th- you'd have thought maybe with a Osvenskan campaign coming. Uh, I think he didn't quite agree on some of the things around the club and with their promotion and maybe the budgets and stuff. Um, that's my speculation. I can't confirm that, but I'm just you know that was the kind of rumours. And um, but all in all, I think he's a highly rated coach, and I think that's why Matt Malmo have thought to themselves, well, let, let's pick him up. You know, uh, it's not worked out of Rosenborg. Let, let let's grab him while we can. Um, in terms of the style, I think he'll he'll kind of change the shape slightly. Uh, I think he he's he said that he wants to play with an aggressive style, um, you know, kind of maybe a similar to Jurgen Klopp kind of high pressing. Um, he wants to which which to be fair, Thomason he had a mixture of that and possession game, but uh, I think Milosevic wants to be a bit a little bit more aggressive in that sense. Um, he said that I want to put a stamp uh, on this team uh, based on all the influences and places I've been. I want us to play with aggressive pressure, high intensity, control the ball, and have a good balance between possession and direct play. He said, I've worked very hard in my career and will continue to do so. My plan and dream is to achieve great results, and that is what's taken me to Malmo. I think he, you know, around the club, if, if you remember anyone listening, we had an interview with uh, Robin Asterhead, who was at Varnamo last season, got them promoted. He's now gone to Malmo as kind of, a, I think, chief scout uh, role in a, in a sort of a, a recruitment capacity. They've also got Andreas Georgsen, who's like the sporting director now, I think sports manager. Um, he was formerly at Arsenal. And I think behind the scenes of the club, they've tried to get this structure in place now behind the scenes to really help them, you know, take uh, new leaps in offense and start to dominate. Because let's not forget, they've got a huge amount of Champions League money, uh, revenue from the uh, Champions League run. So can they now maybe win the league <laughs> better than goal difference kind of thing? That's the challenge. And I think that's what Milojevic has been brought in to do. Yeah, Georg, Georgson is uh, highly rated, isn't he, uh, behind the scenes there at uh, Malmo. I think uh, has obviously got a very good coaching set up there. And Robin Asterhead, one of the best poker players in Sweden. So um, <laughs> we've basically, uh, let's just go on to some more simple terms here. For those who do not know much about Malmo, you might be listening to this podcast for the first time and uh, have very little knowledge. Tell us three or four really key players from Malmo. I'm guessing they, they'll be some of the best in the league, Jonathan. Yeah, they, they, um, they've they had a few ins and outs, actually, this season. There's quite a few transfers, and that was when I started. I was like, could they maybe, could someone else maybe win the league? Um, but ultimately, if you look at their kind of, um, the ins and outs, I mean, key players, the, you know, the, the, the best player probably consistently in the league for the last two, three years, I would say, is Anders Christensen. 
Uh, he's a 31 year old midfielder. He's getting on a bit now. He's starting to get a bit more injuries. And I think that's a key thing for Malmo this season. I think that is an area that they're going to maybe potentially struggle uh, in that midfield. Who who can step up for Christiansen and replace it? Because as is as he gets older, naturally, you know, he's going to maybe need to replace. He's, he's a top top player. One, of, he's probably the best player. Like I say, pound for pound, he's probably the best player in the league over the last sort of three four years. Um, Vel- Velko Berman Savic is a player that I think can go on. Uh, Malmo played a million euros from last season. He did really well. Uh, Serbian international. He really helped them fire them into the Champions League together with Antonio Cholak. But Cholak's gone back to Greece now. He was on loan. Uh, the forward, the 28 year old, he did really well. Uh, 14 goal season, became a key player. Um, his goals against Rangers are still, for me, probably the highlights of last season. The way he took his goals was like you could coach. If you're a coach looking at strikers and how to how to be a striker and be a, a predator in the box, uh, Cholak's goals against Rangers at Ibrox were, for me, like an example for any young player to look at. Um, fortunately, they haven't been able to retain him. I think they really wanted to. And I think both parties might have liked it, but I don't know what's happened, but he's not he's not here now. Who knows, before the deadline, might, that might be some moves. But uh, the, the big story really, uh, Steve, is he's at Kisa Telling his back. Now, he's a striker. Uh, he won the league with them last season. Uh, sorry, the season before last, obviously, in 2020, um, with Jonah Thomason. Um, and as we always joke on this podcast about players sort of leaving Sweden and then uh, they're back before before dinner time, um, he's back within a year again. He, he moved to, um, he was only on loan at the time. I think he was at Anderlecht. Then he won the league with Malmo. He was one of the best players in the league, one of the top scorers. His loan ended. He, he moved around. He went to UAE. And it's not worked out for him in UAE. And he's joining Malmo now permanently on a free transfer. So that's a big replacement for Cholak. I think uh, he's, you know, he's, he's 29. I think he'll do all right. Uh, you mentioned sort of key players. I think, yeah, Berman Savic, Christiansen. The other big player that they definitely um, will be a key player for them, I think, is Denis Hadzikadunic. He returns from Rostov because of the situation in Russia. And he's a player who was a Malmo in the past. He, he's done really well. He was a, a top, top defender. And uh, obviously, he got a big move to Rostov at the time. And, and then... You know, the situation in Russia now, clubs have been allowed to, uh, the players have been allowed to leave by FIFA uh, on permanent transfers, things like that, uh, loan transfers. So he's come back on a kind of a loan situation. Um, and that's important because they've lost uh, another key player, which is Arnel Armehodzic to uh, Bordeaux. Uh, he was a top, top young defender for many years. I think many people said that on Football Manager, he's always their first signing because <laughs> he was quite cheap and he, he was really good. Um he was in the Osvenskan team in the season for, for a couple of years. He's he's um, He's been loaned to Bordeaux with a compulsory buy option. So they've lost him, but they've brought in Hansa Kadunic, who's the same age. So all in all, really, um, they've got a really strong spine. Uh, there's many other players I could mention. Nicholas Moysander, who's a, a veteran. Um, you've got Oscar Levitki, maybe, who's still quite... He's getting old now, but he's still decent. Um, then they've got a few young players who, who we'll talk about in a tent to watch who are coming through. And, of course, up front, Kisa Tellin, who, who can... Um, you know, lead the line. So I think they look quite strong. I think it's a big season for, I'll just name one or two players. I think it's a big season for Sergio Pena. He joined last season and, and kind of, I think this is the year he needs to show himself. I think it's also a big season for Malik Abu Bakari up front. He's a young, a younger striker. Maybe he can come back. And the big uh, good news for Mal- Malmo fans is probably Ola Toivonen. He was out for a, a really long period of time because of injury. Um, he was a key man for them in 2020. Won his first ever Swedish title, but he's um, he, he had a long injury. He's a 35-year-old Hopefully he can come back and be on the same level of form. And the other last player I would say who's a key man for them is Joe Ingeberget, who uh, has a fantastic beard but um, and is a bit of a key man for them, but he is getting on as well. He's 31 now. So, yeah, they've got a strong kind of experienced squad, Malmo. So, yeah, I think they'll, they'll, they'll go well. 59 points won this league last season, Jonathan. Is it, what's it going to take, do you think, this year? Is it going to be a similar amount or are they going to be, how many points do you think Malmo are going to get, basically? Um, it's a tough question. I'd have to think about it. Um, all I will say is that I think you'll need... I mean, Malmo won the league with eight draws and five defeats, which I think is a little bit uh, a little bit low. Um, I'd have to compare back. I mean, 60 points won it the year before that. Uh, Elspore came second with 51 points. I think in, um, in 2019, Jurgarden won it with 66 points. And Malmo had 65 points. So I think you need, uh, you know, the, the year before that, AIK had 67 points. Uh, North Shopping second with 65 points. Malmo finished third with 58 points. Mm-hmm. So I think this season you're going to need, you're going to need a little more, few more points. 
I think that the other teams are stronger, which we're going to talk about now. Um, I, I, I think last season, like AIK finished second. I, I, I had them way down there. Okay, actually, they were the one team I got really wrong. Um, I think they're a lot stronger now. I think Yulgarden is stronger. I think Elsborg are quite strong, and I think Hammerby are quite strong. So, I, I, I think you need minimum sixty points this season to win the league. Yeah, we're going to move on to some other teams now, but briefly, if Malmo have an Achilles heel, what is it? Or what could it be? Uh, that's a great question. I think how will how will um, how will Milojevic gel with this new team? I think that's an important one. Um, is Christensen's injury is going to sort of ease? Um, is Kisatelli still at the same level he was before? Which I'm sure you know he he scored a. He scored a goal in the Swedish Cup um, semi-final against Jurgen. and they beat Jurgen in the way 1-0, um, sort of playing a 4-1-4-1 kind of system. Um, I suppose if they have an Achilles heel, it's, their defence is quite, it's ageing. You know, if you look at, if you look at their defence, Martin Olsen, who's a really good player, obviously played for Blackburn in the past, and back, Premier League fans might remember him, he's 33. Nicholas Moisander's 36. Uh, Lassa Nielsen's 34. Eric Larson's now 30. Jonas Knudsen's 29, so Hedza Knudsen will come in, obviously, a 23-year-old, but with Arma Hodzic going, is that maybe an area? Can they, do they have that physicality? Mm. But really, it's not a hugely physical league. It's not a kind of like, there's not a hugely amount of quick players, is there, in Osvenskan? You can kind of get away with that, I think, at this level. So uh, even Johan Dahlin's 35, a keeper. So that's probably the one area I'd say may let them down. And Christensen, is he still up to the same level as in the past? Because if he's not, then you're looking at the likes of Sebastian Nanasi, young talent coming through. Um, you're looking at the likes of Adi Nalic, er- Edil Rakip. They really need to step up now if if Christensen's injuries continue. OK, so prediction, Malmo to win the Alsvenskan. Who have you got in second place? I can reveal it is a team from Stockholm, but which one? Yeah, second place, I'm going for AIK. Um, I think this is a pretty kind of, pretty uniform prediction. Uh, the media have predicted them to finish second. That's based on Discovery's predictions, Emma Helen. Um, last season, they finished second, obviously, and uh, my prediction is second. Now, I think last season I had them to finish sixth or seventh, which was, you know, way wrong, like I say. They they had a terrible season the year before, uh, of course, and that was, you know, the part of the reason they sacked their manager, of course, and, you know, they've been on a bit of a down period um, post that sort of that title, that successful title that they'd won. Uh, yeah, finished uh, ninth the season before with just 39 points, 11 defeats out of 30. So had a really, really poor year and I didn't really see them climbing so many places to finish second, but they, they did it. And why did they do it? Um, I would say Bartos Grezelak, really, really good manager who's just extended his contract. Uh, I think he he, he, he he sorted out the the balance of the team. I think the balance of the team during that COVID season, obviously no fans is a big thing for ARK as well. Let's not forget that. But the balance of the team, you know, they conceded sort of 33 goals, which in a 30-game season, that's not that bad. But for Malmo, uh, sorry, for AIK, that's actually it's not amazing, is it? They're so staunch defensively. Last season, he he, he trimmed that down to um, 25 conceded. And the big thing was they scored way more goals. Last season, they only scored 30 goals. The season before, sorry, in 2019, sorry, in 2020, they only scored 30 goals out in a 30-game season. That's one per match average. Um, he got the goal scoring a lot better had to fire them to second. They scored 45 goals. Um, and that kind of helped them there, that balance right. They've always been a team that's been very solid defensively. You know, in the last sort of five years since we've been covering this, this, you know, this team and since we've been doing this podcast, they've got that reputation for being extremely solid. When they won the league, obviously conceded just 16 goals. I'll never forget that season there. They weren't hugely entertaining, even though they did score 50 goals. <laughs> but, you know, at the back, you could guarantee clean sheets more or less. Now that's the challenge for them this season. Can they continue that? And I think... You know, when you look at the squad, what I kind of like about ARK, and I think they'll challenge, I think they will challenge for the title potentially here, is that there's not a huge amount of uh, big changes that you'd say, you know, they're going to miss certain players. I think they've kept the bulk of their kind of important key players. Um, the likes of kind of uh, the, the keepers, obviously, they've got uh, they've got Milosevic, Papagionopoulos, Eric Otieno, Mikhail Lustig, uh, and then a few young talents coming through. I think though, you know, that 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 back four is kind of still quite strong. Then I think though they might lose some players in the summer, potentially. Uh they got one in my ten to watch in midfield who I'll, I'll keep for that ten to watch. Uh, I won't say who it is, but uh, you know, they've got the likes of um Sebastian Larson, 36 still, still a kind of a leader of that team. Um they've lost one or two, but I think it's, you know, 
the likes of Philip Rogic, they've lost. They've lost Saku Latupa, um, a few others. But no one really that I'd say they're massively going to miss. Henrik Goitem is the big one. Obviously, he retired, an absolute club legend. But he's 37 now, and he was showing signs of slowing down up front. Um, and I think Stefanelli is, is sticking around. I think this young kid called Zach El- Elbuzetti, um, he looks like a player who kind of like the AIK is Grealish in a way, um, quite a stylistic player. And I think he, he came in summer last season and was really good. And I think he could be someone who, you know, former West Brom, Bolton and Lincoln man, played for Lincoln City, uh, moving to AIK. I don't know how exactly that's come about, but he's uh, he's decent. And um, they've got one lad up front as well, Kenyon, who they've signed from a Kenyan club, Tusker, called Henry Major. Now, he's a young player with a big reputation. He scored in preseason in the Swedish Cup, um, 20 years old. Can he maybe sort of replace Henrik Goitem's goals? That's that's probably the key question there. Um, but all in all, I, I think their squad is quite compact. No real huge changes that I think they need to worry about. Quite a few young talents they've got in their squad to come through. And Grizzalak, I think, is a good manager who just keeps the continuity there. So all in all, that's why I've got AIK second place. There's always a, some Kenyan, isn't there, in this league? <laughs> Must say it's like a, a fast track from Kenya to Sweden. Um, uh, it's very interesting stuff. I've got some very good news for iCore fans. My cat has just randomly come onto the desk and started pouring me, and uh, she's maybe on one again. And she has a knack of predicting the, that that league yeah, league winner, Jonathan. So is it yeah. iCore? Has she chosen iCore this year? She's a big uh, she's a big Buda Glimp fan in, in in Norway, so possibly that could be a good omen for uh, for AIK fans. <laughs> Friends Arena, 50,000 capacity. It's by far the biggest stadium in club football in uh, in Sweden. And they had an incredible home record last year. They won 13 out of 15. Nobody beat them at the Friends uh, Arena last year. It's an absolute fortress, Jonathan. Would you expect the same again? And, and how are they going to improve that away record? Because it's interesting that the main strength of this team is defence. And I think really defensive teams generally do well on the road, don't they? They, they nick out nil nils and one nils. How, how are they going to improve that away form? Because that was obviously the big problem last year. Yeah, I think that's that's the key issue for them. Control control of the game in certain phases of the match. How can they improve that? And I, I don't have an answer for that. I think we'll find out. But I just think they, they've kept the experience that they had. So I don't think it's kind of like the season before that, they had a lot of turnover, um, made a lot of changes. They needed a bit of a revolution. And uh, I think they've recruited well. They, they always tend to recruit well at AIK. And I still think they might bring in one or two more. There's a lot of there's been a lot of rumors, for example, about um uh players coming in that, that might happen towards the end of the window. John Guidetti has been rumored quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if that's gonna happen, but if that does, that's a huge striker. I've got a feeling I've got a feeling ARK will bring in one one more maybe big player. Um and if that happens then of course uh it will strengthen strengthen them even further. But um yeah I think they've got to figure out that way from the first game of course they got hacking away. Let's see how they get on there. Um, home form, I expect them to be strong as, as usual. The one reason that I've got them above, I'll give my, I'll give my third place away as well. There's no secret here. I've got Jurgen in third. The one reason that I've got them above Jurgen and their big rivals is that I just think that Jurgen a little bit more unpredictable. They could, they could do better because their recruitment has been quite strong, actually, which we'll talk about. But I think the old adage, you know, um, defences win titles is something just in the back of my mind. I've just got a feeling that AIK will be a little bit stronger defensively uh got the experience of those 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 sort of top, those good players at the back milosevic is a sort of a warrior uh been around the block and done it in osvenska and otieno's getting better and better um papagiopoulos is a decent sort of solid player has won the cup with ostersons he's, he's he's been around the block as well just think that they got you know they've got a young kid as well joe mendez who could be one to look out for a 19 year old uh, and they've signed axel bjornstrom as well from uh, so uh, so he is a 26-year-old left back potentially who who might come in as well and compete. So I just think that that that, that defence is slightly better than your gardens, and that's why I've got them to finish second. Now I've just been looking at our Svenskan fantasy, and we are going to be talking about that at the end of uh, this little section. But um, of the six defenders in fantasy who are priced seven million or more, three of them are at uh, AIK. Now. The strength of this team has historically been defence, and is that basically going to be the same again? Yeah, I think it will. I mean, I've more or less just explained their defence, um, the strength of it. I think, you know, I looked at fantasy, by the way, and um, we will talk about that in each section, as, as we did on the Elite Serian one, and I'll give you a code in a minute on that to join the fantasy league, because it's, uh, it's an exciting one. 
there's 25,000 players at the moment and I'm looking to looking to do well. But one, one thing I, I noticed in this, this offense kind of fantasy, I mean, some of the prices of the AOK defenses, I mean, Otsieno has gone up to 8 million, which is ridiculous. In my, you know, there's a, there's a lot of high price defenders now uh, on the game. Um, you know, Otsieno was, was like a regular for me last season. can't remember how much he was, but I'm sure he wasn't more than 6 million at the start of last season. Um, you'll have to find you have to find a player in there uh, to, to, to put in your team. I suppose the one you could look for maybe is Joe Mendes. He's a young player that I think will, he's not in my tent to watch, so I'm happy to talk about him, Joseph Mendes. I think he's an exciting talent that could come through this season. Will he get the game time? I'm not sure, but he's, uh, as I say, 19. He played last season at uh, Hammer TIF development squad. And there's been a lot of talk about him in pre-season. Um, the manager has even praised him uh, based on his pre-season showings and attacking fullback. He could maybe add some value there in that team at six, six, six million. But uh, yeah, Otti, you know, eight million, that is, a, that is a stretch. But you're right in saying that, as I just mentioned, I think the defence is what separates AIK from maybe, um, say, the likes of Jürgen Garden and Hammerby. I always am not sure about Jürgen Garden and Hammerby in terms of defensively. Can they get the balance right? Uh, even though they might, you could argue they've got better attacks. I think they probably, you could probably argue that both of them have got better attacks than AIK at this moment in time. Because uh, there's a big there's a big burden on uh, Stefanelli and uh, Nabil Bahui as well up front to get goals. So... Um, they both will need to kind of step up. Uh, and El Buzedi, I think, is one who, who who potentially will need to weigh in with some goals as well because, like I say, they are a little bit weak in that area. But all in all, um, I think their defence is their, their, their strongest asset. OK, second place for AIK. And you mentioned that you're predicting your carton for third. So let's move on to this other Stockholm Giants. They were third last season as well, just a couple of points off uh, the title, uh, actually. So, uh, although they kind of blew it, didn't they? They had a really uh, drop points crucially late. Third place again, then, for, for your gut. And how do you see them shaping up? Yeah, I think that they will be third. I think they will potentially contend for the title. They're a difficult one, your garden, because if it, if it clicks, I mean, they could romp the league. Uh, if everything If everything clicks into gear, I'd go as far as to say they could win the league. And I'd go as far as to say they could they could actually kind of rip up the league. Big talk. <laughs> because let's just look at some of their signings, right? They've brought in, um, okay, in defence, they brought in Piotr Johansson. He's a two-time title winner with Malmo. Uh, had a really good season for Kalmar last season. He got an assist pretty much uh, every every eight games. Uh, really good season there. Joins on a free. He'll probably maybe replace uh, Witchery. You know, he's someone that I think can come in and, and be there. They're sort of starting right back potentially. Um they brought a young Kenyan. I know you like your Kenyan, Steve. Uh, Kenyan centre back called Frank Odiambo. He's someone who uh, apparently had an offers from France, Belgium, um, but settled on Diff. And he's he's meant to be kind of a very highly rated 19 year old. Um, you've still got Hamma Ekdal, who's a, a quality defender. <clears throat> for me, he was probably pound for pound one of the best defenders in the league last year. Obviously, losing Witchery last season was a big, big blow for your guard, and I think. And that kind of, I think that, I think you can underestimate, I can't, that can't be underestimated how much that affected them, actually. I think if, when you look at the final table last season, you could go as far as to say that that had a big bearing on their their final you know position because they weren't far off the title. You know they, and the game against Varberg boys at home. If they'd have won that game, they'd have been champions. Uh, so, pretty sure I'm right in saying that they'd have been champions. So, you know they they were only two points off winning the league uh, or three points off winning the league. Sorry, and there were games that they had so many missed opportunities. But um, I think what hampered them last season was the. They just weren't quite prolific enough in in games. There were sort of games where they just couldn't quite get over the line. Forty six goals scored, which is the same as Hacken, who finished twelve. You know, it's not a bad amount, but you know, Hammerby scored way more. Um, you know, Malmo scored way more. Elsborg scored way more. So, I think that's the area they need to improve. And when you look at their signings, Steve, there's some really juicy, exciting signings uh, in the forward areas that they've got. Uh, the big one is Sayed Haksabanovic. Now, this is a massive, massive coup for Diff. They brought him back. He was at North Shopping, obviously. Um, got sold from North Shopping to Rubin Kazan <clears throat> for a big, big transfer fee, the biggest in North Shopping's history that they, they made on him, made a big wedge on him. And obviously, um, what's happened is the situation in Russia means that he's he's come back home. So um, in the mid six million euros on him, North Shopping, and effectively Jurgan brought him back for, for pretty much nothing on a, on a loan deal. Uh, he's only 22 years old, and even um, their manager, Rickard Norling, said this is like incredible signing for um, for uh, Jurgen. I think he, there were talks maybe to bring him back, but I think Norshipping were a bit too late on it. 
uh, he he goes into Dugan's team and immediately is like a huge upgrade. I mean, he he's a huge boost to them. And if he if he clicks with the likes of Magnus Eriksson, um, the likes of you know Elias Anderson, maybe Emmanuel Banda, um, and then obviously the big signing up front, Victor Edvardsson from Degerfors, who everybody wanted, uh, fourteen goals in twenty nine games last season, uh, and Dugan won the race to sign him. You know, if if if, if Edvardsson, Eriksson, and Haksavanovic click, that you've got you've got enough goals there to win a title between them. So, um, you know, with, with the kind of attacking impetus that the likes of Johansson and uh, Elliot Sheck brings from the back as well. Uh, and so I think they've got a really strong squad. It's just, can they gel the joint manager situation? Are they, are they you know, how are they going to kind of handle it? They've, they've done consistently well over the past few years, but, um, you know, in the Swedish Cup, obviously, they lost in the semi-finals of Malmo. Just wonder if they've still got enough to get over that line. But uh, a very strong squad. Yeah, I'm just looking through their transfers now and I'm a bit disappointed that Chile has left to Michelin. Mm. Two, 2.1 million pounds. Uh, and there's a very interesting loan signing that caught my eye here. Um, Arnold Eber, the Cameroonian, on loan from AS King FA. One of them random ones which just caught my eye. But I do like the, their signings. I was a big fan of Ed Varsen last season. Gustav Wickheim has come in as well from uh, ex Godset back in the day. I think he's been around the block in Scandinavia, although most recently filling his boots there with money in Saudi Arabia. So, um, but yeah, he, he looks like an interesting signing. Tell us a bit about the the managers here at your garden, because uh, is it the, still the same situation that, that's been going on in recent years? Yeah, they've kept their <clears throat> they've kept their managers, uh, and to be fair, they're good managers. You know, there was massive controversy last season with the whole um, you know nearly got sacked for sort of um, praising the Nazis in, in, a, in a roundabout way, which was a, a big talking point. But more or less, um, you know, they've stuck around. And I think that, um, I think all in all, they're good, they're good managers at the end of the day. Uh, good recruitment. You know, Bossa Anderson is someone who, who I think that Haksivanovic signing, it sums him up, to be honest. Um, they, they, they tend to sort of be ahead of the curve, really. You know, on, on players, and, and they t- tend to get players when you know others maybe miss miss the boat. And I think that's the case here with Haksabanovic. Every, every team in the league would want Haksabanovic. Um, for your garden to get him is is a, is a big thing. So um, yeah, I think that um, the, the challenge for these two managers is, is can they, you know, can they kind of blend the team well enough to to get the balance right between defense and attack? Because I think. As I mentioned, Witchy was a Witchy was a huge, huge player for them. He added so many goals and assists. I mean, in fantasy terms, he was incredible, um, wasn't he? At the beginning of the the campaign, so you know, Thomas Lagerlof, um has has sort of talked about. They've got a couple of injuries before the start of the season. There's a few few um, injury injury problems they got to deal with, but I would say that all in all, um, they're, they're, they've got a strong squad. Even their managers are kind of experienced. You know, they 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 did well at Sirius as well. The joint managers before they got the Eurogarden job, they've always been. They've always been quite solid. They've always known how to get the job done, more or less, because you know they weren't far off the title title last year with with a you know a squad that some might not have thought would win it. So, yeah, I think um, they're sort of solid custodians. If it doesn't go well for them this year, they might be a little bit under pressure. But um, you know, let's see how it goes. Interesting stuff, and you, you've got them in third place. It sounds like you know you said if things click, they could they could win the league here. And is that because? you've obviously got some just some concerns about this this team as well so what would you say could go wrong instead of going right yeah i think i think the defense um is a bit of a question mark for me i think kim bergstrand and thomas lagerloff they're, they're joint managers they've got good conditions to win the league you mentioned Vikheim there as well another sort of solid signing um they do have a big chance. Like I said, if, if it all clicks into gear, because, you know, these managers, they, they've won the title before, these managers. So they, they know what they're doing. They're no mugs. I think last season they just didn't quite maybe have the squad um, to, to do it, you know. And um, in 2019, obviously, they, they did do it. They got over the line on the last day by one point. And they had a really, really strong record that year and they only conceded 19 goals. That's the key for me now. Can they... You know, I mentioned AAK second because they, I just think they've got a better defence. Can this defence really gel enough? As I mentioned, you lost Witchery. He went to Alkmaar for 1.6 million. You've lost Jacob Unalarsson as well. He's been loaned to a club in Greece. He's, he, he's getting on a little bit in years now, 27, but he's still 
very experienced at this level. So I was a little bit surprised to see him maybe leave. Um, but they have brought a lot of young players. I, last season, you know, I talked about the likes of Isaac Heen, um, who's come in from the third tier. Vassalon, he's now 23. You know, has he had, with a year of sort of um, experience behind his belt, you know, he, he's rated quite highly behind the scenes at your garden. Uh, Leo Kornick, who obviously played in Norway. Um, he's someone that is 21 now, right back as well. I think he's the long-term, maybe deemed the long-term successor to Witchery. Can he come in and, and improve the, the defence? You know, the thing is, Elliot Shek is, is now 32. Um, I'm just not quite sure about that defence. You know, Odiambo is a bit of an unknown quantity. I think he was playing in non-league this time last year. It, non-league in Kenya. I mean, that's incredible. You know, he was playing for Bongonia FC. Um, moved to Goa a year ago, which is a, a massive club, obviously, in, in Kenya. But if you think about that, imagine non-league in Kenya a year ago. He's got, he had a huge rise um, to go all the way to Geogarden. Will he get in the team? I don't know. Um, obviously, they signed Pierre Bengtsson as well from FC Copenhagen. He's He's been at ARK. He's spent the majority of his career in Denmark, but he's 33. So just that's the key, key question for me. Is this defence strong enough to, to win a title? I'm not quite convinced. And then it's just a case of, how will Ed Varson adapt? You know, can he can he get the goal? It's, you know, that, it's all well and good being at Degafors, but when you're at a big club with a lot of pressure on your shoulders, can he can he kind of um, can he do enough to replace the likes of Edward Chalifu, like you mentioned, who who got a big move to Michelin for two point two million? You know, th- those sort of players that they've lost, I'm just a little bit concerned about some of the players that have departed. So, a few question marks there. Joel Osorio as well, big season for him. You know, I I, I, well, I even wrote a Wise Cup blog in him last year, and he, he just didn't perform. But he's a top player if he can get it, get it, you know in shape. Twenty two still only former Sunderland man, and Kalle Holmberg as well. Always someone I've I've not hugely rated, but he is a sort of consistent all Svenskan striker at twenty nine. So my, my concern is the defence, as I say, Stephen. I just think that balance as well. Can they get that balance right in the midfield? I think they've lost a few key players, and I just wonder how they'll recover from that. Interesting stuff. And um, third place for your garden there. We are now going to move to Hammerby. Uh, both these teams actually play at the same stadium, the Telly 2 Arena, 30,000 capacity. And uh, your garden, we know they've had big problems with the, the ghost of Stockholm. Um, uh, and against Hammerby, they've, they've certainly had issues down the years. But Hammerby have, I mean, they, they were in that title race, weren't they, two or three years back. This time, you predict him to move one place higher from last year's fifth. So what do you see, uh, how do you see Hammerby improving this year, Jonathan? I think that <clears throat> I've got them in, yeah, as, as mentioned, I've got them fourth. Last season, I had them in fifth. The media's got them in fifth as well. So I've, I would say I'm predicting Hammerby to have a better year than many expect. I think they have the potential to be a dark horse for the title. I think it's going to be quite a close league this season. I really think there's not much between the top five. Um, I think we, we're in for a big season. I think these five are the best, clearly best five teams in the league now. And I think they all, all strengthen quite well. So I think we've got an exciting campaign ahead of us. And I don't rule Hammerby out of maybe even going challenging for the title. But I've got them in I've got them in, in fourth just because I think that they're slightly weaker than the, the three I've mentioned. Having said that though, I do I do quite like the direction they're going at this moment in time. And I think that they Hammerby fans can be pretty excited about the, the direction of the club right now. I think they um they're looking quite good. Uh obviously they've got a new manager. Um they had the whole problem with Milojevic, which we've talked about. And they've had to end up replacing him with, um, you know, uh, they've ended up replacing him with uh, Marty Sifuentes. Now, he's a coach that you probably know more about than me, uh, because he's been around the block in, in Norway and also in Denmark as well. So um, he's someone that we've actually followed on Twitter and tried to get on the pod in the past. And, uh, you know, we know, I think when he was in Norway. So uh, hopefully one of us will get him, um, between me, you and Henry, maybe, um, our Danish uh, friend. But uh, no, I, what I like about Hammerby is I think they've got quite a good mix of players and I think they've got a more balanced squad. I think that um, I think the manager's exciting. The, all, all reports from what I hear about him are that he's a highly rated sort of Spanish coach that, that, that gets a lot out of players and has a sort of exciting playing style. And if that's the case, you know, this Hammerby side are sort of a juicy, kind of like a juicy apple, aren't they? Just waiting to be plucked from a tree. And a top top manager could could really take them to to the next level. Obviously, you know they won the Swedish Cup last season under under Stefan Bilborn, who, who's moved on now to to Norway. Um, what I've never what I've always complained about with Hammerby is that I just think that they are too transfer heavy. They're too like just you know 
100 transfers a season type thing, in and out. Players don't stick around for more than four or five months. Um, and there's always that kind of thing with me. I'm like, where's the continuity? This season, I see some promising uh, signs that they maybe are sorting that out a little bit. I think they've got more of a um, settled defence now. You know, they've got uh, Richard Maggiar, they've got Bjorn Paulson, they've got Mads Fenger, they've got uh, Moa Nagjais, uh, Dennis Widgren, and they've also brought in Edwin Kurtulis from uh, from Halmstad, who had a great season with Halmstad. Obviously, remember that famous Halmstad defence. Um, he's come in, he's a right-back, 22-year-old, who, who's a good player. The goalkeeping situation, they've got um, someone who was in my tent to watch last year, Oliver Dovan, he's come through. Uh, and English, he's got English heritage, by the way. And he's he's a sensational talent. I think he he could be a big big player um, in years to come. He's only nineteen, but he could compete compete now for a, the first team goalkeeping spot uh, permanently. They've had a lot of changes in midfield, but they've brought in players that are quite like Dennis Colander, nineteen year old from Orebro after they got relegated. Nahir Basara has been around the block. I think in a better team again from Orebro on on a free. I think in a better team he could he could shine. He's, he's always been a good player at this level. And now he's finally getting a chance at sort of one of the top, top clubs. Um, you know, after so many years of sort of how, uh, Orebro and places like that, he's played in Saudi Arabia and Cyprus as well. But uh, I think this could be a good move for him, that 31. Um, William Swedberg is a player that we, you know, we will talk about. And I think he is a huge talent. They're lucky that he's not moved on, but we'll talk about that later, I guess. Um, they've signed Lorenzo Sadiko from Turkey. Uh, he, he's been at Varnamo and Helsingborg in the past, Albanian international, solid player, um, defensive midfielder. Michael Lardo is someone who's quite highly rated. I think he's one to watch this season. Uh, he's a 19-year-old left winger. Um, sporting director has described him as someone with great potential. They brought in Joel Nielsen from Hammerby as well. He, he had a really good year for Hammerby, uh, sorry, for Mialbi. Uh last season. They brought him in on a free, uh, five goals, four assists in 2021. And he's a sort of solid midfield player uh, down the right-hand side. So, and then up front, obviously, they've, they've got Astrid Silmani, they've got Gustav Ludwigsen, um, and so they've got strong options up front. I think Silmani, I'd expect more from him this year, maybe. Um, so, and, and Ludwigsen's always been a good player. So, I think if Fuentes can get the, the balance out of those teams, and I think in the Swedish Cup games, they, they've looked strong in the Swedish Cup games that I've, I've seen. They beat North Shopping, uh, came from 2-0 down to beat them 3-2. They beat Elfsborg 1-0 as well. So, they're looking quite solid. Very well said there, Jonathan. And um, I can tell you in the manager, Marty Sifuentes, who I believe used to listen to this podcast. Um, it's a shame we never got him on as a guest. But hopefully, well, maybe one day we can get him on. But uh, he is a manager that will get the most out of the team. Every area he's with, he's almost worth an extra, say, five or six points a season, in my opinion, because he's that sort of guy. He, um He's tactically strong, great man manager as well. So I, I certainly rate um, Sifuentes. I want to talk to you about goalkeeper Dovan because you had him on in the tend to watch list before. This really could be his big breakout year, though, you think, Jonathan. I do love a goalkeeper and I've certainly been following the progress of this guy and um, he could be a big part of the team. Yeah, he, he's one to watch out for. I mean, yeah, I've already had him on my tend to watch, so... Um... We're not giving anything away here in that sense. He's a huge talent. Uh, he's already played in like their, their kind of a European games. Obviously, they're going to be in Europe again this season because they, they they won the cup. And um, I think, you know, they've got Dav- Davor Blazovic, who's kind of a 29-year-old, and they've got a young, another young keeper called um, Sebastian Selin. But um, Dovan's, Dovan's the one. He, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely, I'll, I'll go as far as to say he will definitely get a big move at some point. Uh, strong presence and frame. He's, he just looks like a goalkeeper. He's, he's got a really, bit, he's built well physically. Um, Stefan Bilbo, when he was there, described him as one of Europe's biggest, sorry, um, their, their sporting director, sorry, described him as one of Europe's biggest goalkeeping talents. Uh, Stefan Bilbo, when he was there, said he's got everything. He's good in the air. He's responsive. He's good with his feet and he's good on the line. Um, he literally said he really has everything and he's a good size. Um, he's been on trials at Brighton in the past. Obviously, Brighton, uh, I've always said that on this podcast, Brighton scouting is probably better than Manchester United's, and um, and they 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 they're on top of all these top players in Scandinavia, and he is um, on their radar. He's already been in with trials for them. Maybe he might move there at some point. Uh, yeah, he's a really unfortunately. I don't have the goalkeeper. I tend to watch, which uh, you can get on Patreon, uh, patreoncom slash Nordic Football Podcast. Obviously, where we've moved both uh, Elite Serian and Osvenskan tend to watch is on there. Uh, for those who who didn't listen to the Elite Serian pod. 
of course. So go and listen to that and you'll get my 10 to watch. But there's no keepers on it. So Dovan is the one where, yeah, he's a really good player. I mean, it's it's still not confirmed that he'll be definite number one. But I think that as the season goes on, I think he's got a really strong case to make for being their, their, their main goalkeeper. And I, I've got no real qualms about him. I think he's got the ability to be a top keeper in his first game. Interesting, interesting stuff. And uh, Hammerby were another side who had a really strong home record last season, won 11 out of 15 at home, just one defeat. It's quite staggering how strong these Stockholm teams are at home, Jonathan. They, and they weren't strong when uh, in the COVID season when no fans were allowed in. Just how difficult of a place is it to go for anyone visiting, really, for all of these uh, three teams? And they have a massive rivalry between each other, don't they? Uh, for those who are not aware, that it, it's really big stuff. Yeah, the ghost, the ghost of Stockholm, which we've talked about on previous podcasts uh, in last season, obviously when uh, Jurgard and Hammerby and AAK play, it's it's it's. Um, I've never actually been to a Stockholm derby, but it's one thing, definitely bucket list type thing. I'd love to love to go to one. Um, in terms of the spectacle, it's always the biggest game of the season. Really, it's one of the biggest games in the in the calendar. Uh, you always guaranteed really great tifos and flares and things like that. It's always exciting. Uh, usually, the games can be quite cagey, but um, last season they were quite entertaining. Uh, you know, you mentioned your garden being in third. I mean, that's one of the things that seems to hamper them at times. They're in their sort of ghost of Stockholm where they tend to struggle. They've had such a poor record against uh, AIK and Hammerby in the last sort of 10 years. Um, and that always tends to hamper them. And those points count at the end of the season, you know. Those sort of two, three points uh, tend to add up. Yeah, Hammerby have a, you know, a slightly better um, record in, in these derbies. But even if you look at Hammerby last season, you know, they, they lost a, a away to AIK. Um, they drew with Jurgen at home. They then um, uh, got battered by Jurgen 4-1. That was the kind of a cathartic win for Jurgen that, you know, they would have been waiting for for so long. Um, they battered Hammerby, as I say, 4-1 there. And then they beat uh, AIK 1-0. So, you know, Hammerby maybe need to improve their record a little bit this year. But generally speaking, the ghost of, of, of Jurgen is, is the one that they're, they're really affected by it. But... Um, yeah, they, you know, they're a good club, Hammerby. In general, they have quite an attacking team. They always score goals, always concede goals. 41 conceded uh, last season, which is just too many to win a title. And, and I think that's where Marty Sefuentes is going to need to tighten things up. And I think that's what excites me a little bit about Hammerby. The, the defence is a bit settled. You know, in the past, they've had, you know, Aziz Watara who moved on. They've had, um, they've had the likes of uh, Neto Borgs. They've had the likes of they've had so many sort of players coming in and going out, you know, where they, they they rotate it a lot. I think that this is the good thing about them this season in in defensive side of things. I think they've got a decent, um, you know, decent defense that, that could settle and, and and maybe help them improve that that defensive record. So you've got them in fourth place. Uh, let's round out the top five now, and you've gone with Elfsborg here. A slight drop down for them compared to last season. They've been pretty solid side, haven't they, for the last two seasons? How you how do you see them? shaping up for uh, 2022, Jonathan? Yeah, and I, I feel, I, it felt a little bit, I felt a little bit uncomfortable about having them so low. But then again, at the same time, I didn't really see where else to, to put them. I think they, as I've said, I think this top five is very strong. And I think all of them could compete for the title and maybe even win the title. So I'm not, I'm not down on any of them. I don't think this is me saying any of them is going to have a bad season. I've just got it in that order, kind of um, as we go along. By the way, um, Hammerby have made a late signing, Bubakar Trawali, which has um, just come in, I think, in the last day or so. Uh, just to add to that as well, just missed him out. But and and, and they've lost Akin Kumiamu, um, which is a massive a massive loss for them. He's gone to Copenhagen for nearly four million pounds. So uh, just just wanted to add add to that there. Um, Elsborg have um, been really really good the last few seasons. I think that there's an argument. That you could say that Elsborg could win the league. Um, I think they've got they've got a huge amount of praise for everything they've done um, in the last few years, and I think it's deserved. Would you be telling? They've got their game model is is really sorted out. I think their recruitment has been excellent in the last sort of three years. I think they've really sorted out their recruitment department, and that's taken them from just a kind of nothing team. You know, we never used to even speak about them really on this podcast. They were kind of like just there's nothing to say, just boring. Um, but they they really they're they're a sort of model club in terms of how to turn the club around on just on the strength of your recruitment. I think they've got this kind of game model type recruiting thing where they they target players based on certain metrics. 
um, which is kind of set by Jimmy Tellin. I think like physical metrics and, you know, they, they, I think they use analytics and that kind of thing. I think they're quite methodical in how, in how they do their recruitment. And um, you've got to be, you've got to be fair to them. They, they, they've got it right because uh, they've got some really, they've signed some really good players and, and they've also sold some really good players. So um, yeah, if we just look at kind of the, the, the transfers that they've made uh, this season, um, I would just go through some of them quickly that, to, to look out for maybe. Um, Michael Baidu comes in from uh, from Obos League, from San Ulf. Uh, he got 10 goals, 10 assists in 69 games at Obos. Uh, and he's a, he could be a useful signing in midfield for them. Uh, I think they've also signed a, a lad called Oscar Ager, who, 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 again from Obos, he was a revelation there. He got 55 games, 39 goals. Um, wasn't quite so good at Starbeck as a kid. He only got one goal in 10 games there. But last season, he was an absolute revelation. If he can come in up front, um, he's only 21, but if he can come in up front and improve them, then, you know, they, <clears throat> maybe that can replace some of the goals um, that they've lost. I mean, they haven't lost a huge amount of, I would say, irreplaceable players. Um, perhaps in defence, they've kind of lost a few. Um, Joseph Akuma obviously left. Um, he was top, top player, in my opinion. I really liked him. Um, they've, they've sold Christopher McVeigh to Miami FC for 400000 Frederick Holst has gone to Lillestrom. Um Gustav Broman as well, he's been released. But I think all in all, uh, the other signing they've made is Gustav Henriksen, um, who he, he, you know, he's played for them in the past. So I think they've got quite a settled team. I think that they haven't really lost anyone that I would say is irreplaceable. I think some of the younger players are getting a bit older now, a bit more experienced, so you can expect them to do better. And I just think all in all, they've got a good, good game. Of ball. But, but I, I think where I worry about them is just goals, I think. Is Pear Frick good enough to win? A, is a Pear Frick a, a title winning forward? I'm not quite sure about that. 29. He's had a good record and he's actually started preseason fairly well. But um, for me, that's the, probably the question mark. And do they have enough goals from midfield? Because they, they've lost a few, you know, midfielders as well. Um, so, you know, Robert Gajani, for example. But I, I just, I'm just not sure about where they're getting regular, consistent goals this season. That's, that's probably my one concern about them. Well, Oscar Arga might be the guy. I've got a funny story about him, actually, because there's a guy I follow on Twitch, a football manager streamer called Pokes FM, and he had a great save going on last year with Brorud. And he used to get this Oscar Arga scoring loads of goals for him. And every time he scored a goal, he had this musical clip come up. Do you know the song, Agadoo from Black Lace? <laughs> yeah, every time he scored a goal, it was like, I get to do, do, push by now for whatever it is. So oh, I always remember that. But yeah, Arga does come with quite a good reputation. And I've got a feeling he might be quite decent. Now, before we finish talking about Elfsborg, we, we've got to mention the legend that is Johan Larsson, who <laughs> was a fantasy dream for me last year. And he's, uh, we'll talk about fantasy in a minute. But how important is Johan Larsson to this team? Yeah, he's a. Uh... He's not in my good books right now because he cost me cost me the mini league title, didn't he? Between me and you, so uh, I'm not, I can't say I'm that satisfied with him. But uh, I put him in my team way too late because he's an essential player, really, in fantasy. He's quite expensive, but uh, you know, pound for pound, probably the best right back in the league. Statistically brilliant, you know, he gets assists, gets goals. Um, Thirty one years old, just you know, he was at Bromby, came back, and since he came back, he's you know, he's really been a key man for them and and, and taken them to the next level, really. Um, you know. The media's kind of got them in fourth place as well, uh, and and of course last season they, they they finished fourth, and I just think that that that's probably where you know fourth or fifth is kind of where they'll be. But don't forget they were they were well in in the race for the title last season, and then they lost to Malmo in a key game, and that kind of I think that ended their momentum. Um, you know, fifty five points the title winner was fifty nine points, so they weren't far off it. Can they get over the line this season? I'm not sure, but I think one thing I'd say that excites me is they've got a really we've got a really good strong five teams. Um, Larson's quality, I like Leo Weisenden at the back, Maldu, uh, Jarge away. Um, he's, he's done quite well. So they, yeah, they're, you know, they're a decent, all around they're a decent squad. And, um, Jimmy Tennant's done really well. I just, I just wonder if, uh, they've got enough in them to, to kind of challenge for that top three. So you've got Elfsborg in fifth, Hammerby in fourth, Jorgan in third, AEK in second and Malmo winning the league. So actually top five predictions. Very, very good stuff there, Jonathan, um, from that top five. And, and I'm excited now hearing it myself. It does sound like one of the strongest 
lineups we've got in terms of uh, teams at the top in our Svenskin for a while. Right, time for a break now. We uh, As soon as we come back, we're going to talk about a little bit of fantasy advice from the players from those top five. I'm sure you've got some great selections. I know who my nap would be to definitely get in your team. It's no, no real secret. But uh, yeah, do join us after the break. Uh, we've got that. And also we'll be talking about some of the mid-table sides that Jonathan's predicting. So uh, catch you soon. Welcome back to the Nordic Football Podcast, our Svenskin Season Preview 2022. I'm Steve Wiss and I'm with Jonathan for Dugba. And I promised you some fantasy advice and talk. First of all, Jonathan, give us some details about the NFP Fantasy League, which you can join. And then we're going to talk about who are the best pickups from those top five sides you mentioned. Yes, welcome back. I uh, hope you will join us for fantasy this year. I'm fired up for it. Hopefully, I'm going to conquer you in Norway, especially, Steve. But uh, Sweden, you know, we'll see how it goes as well. Um, for those who enjoy fantasy football, and I've seen a lot of people on Twitter at Nordic Football on our timeline kind of talking about it and doing their teams and stuff, which is really, really great to see. It's a summer league. So, you know, when the Premier League ends, you've, you've got, a, you know, if you're looking for your fantasy, uh, if you're looking to scratch that fantasy itch, Norway and Sweden are really good leagues, you know, with the fantasy uh, league they have and, the, you know, they're exciting leagues to watch. So, Fantasy.elsvenskan.se is the uh, league um, website. And our mini league, the Nordic Football Podcast mini league, the famous Nordic Football Podcast mini league is the code for to join is II, uh, as in I for Ian, IIFYVU. That's IIF for France, YVU. Join the league. Um, we've already got about 150, I think, in the mini league, roughly. Um, it's been a hotly contested title over the years and there's always the, the mini battle between uh, Meat Man Warriors and, and JF Football FC which will resume this year in earnest I'm sure uh, we will have on Patreon kind of um, weekly kind of previews as well which will you know we'll be looking at that from maybe a betting perspective if you're over 18 but also we'll look at kind of what games to, to, to maybe target um, from a fantasy perspective and also just from you know general perspective what games if you're betting maybe you might want to look at so, um, you know, the, the, the first week of fixtures is coming on Saturday. And then from there, obviously, it'll be a, a weekly um, point, point system. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite excited about fantasy. Are you, are you Steve? I'm, I'm very excited. I'm probably more excited about Asvenskan fantasy than... than <laughs> the, I do better in Asvenskan. I don't know why. I think it's because the point system is is maybe better. Maybe I overthink it in Norway a bit as well. But I, uh, I mean, against all odds, I actually beat you in this league last year, didn't I? Um, it was rather a shock outcome, but yeah, like I said yeah. at the back end of last of last yeah, season, I am aiming high. I'm I'm going. I'm shooting for the stars now. I'm <laughs> I'm coming for the big dogs, mate, and uh, I'm confident. And uh, you know, I'm going to be asking you now for some some advice for some of the players. But well, I remember last season you had a month where there was no elite series, and I think that allowed you to watch some teams and stuff. So let's see with the league starting at the same time when you have the capacity, but. Yeah, you know what? Even giving away some of these teams and stuff, you know, I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm giving you some information here. That, I think last season they used all my info against me and it came out to bite me. And Johan Larsson just killed me and Witchery as well for a bit. Who, who, who then, right, these top five teams, give me four or five names or give the listeners four or five names that you um, <laughs> you've got to get in Brilliant. your team or, you, or that you should consider getting in your team. Roydy and Slit there. I know you're watching and taking notes. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would say the first thing to say is, do you target AIK's defence? I would say yes. Um, if you can afford the likes of Eric Otieno, eight million, you know, you got 161 points there last season, top scoring defender. Um, he was a lot lower last season, and he was a fantastic performer. The question mark for me will be, maybe he might get a move in the summer. You know, he might leave. He's 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 a, he's, a, he's at that level now where I think he'll have a lot of scouts watching him in the first half of the year. But obviously, you can always change your team, can't you? Um, if you're looking for maybe a cheaper option at AIK, you've got Papa Giannopoulos at 7 million. He's 146 points. And Milosevic, 135 points. He's again 7 million. So you're really looking at that AIK team. And then Lustig, you've got as well 6.5, uh, 121 points. So that AIK defense is strong. And 
if you look at their starting games, obviously hacking away, can they get get a clean sheet there? Hacking haven't, haven't didn't have a good season last year. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, and then they've got a big game against North Shopping at home the, the, the following week. Uh, if you're not looking, you know, if those are too pricey for you, then I would say, you know, Malmo's defence is an interesting one because they, last season they were always like maybe liable to concede one or two. Um, tended to win games, but they always, you know, they, they, they didn't have as high scorers in their defence. Eric Larson was their top scoring defender, 106 points, 6.5. Obviously, that's not including Ahmed Hodzic, who's left the league. I would say that uh, 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 an attractive, two attractive options, I would say, are um, a new signing at Malmo. I didn't actually mention Matej Chalus. He signed from um, Slovan Liberec in the Czech Republic. He's 6.5, a solid sort of strong defender. Um, and Dennis Hadzikadunic, who I mentioned, who, who's a top player at this level. At the moment, he's only got 2.2% ownership uh, and he's 6.5 as well. I expect him to be a top player at this level in Osvenska. He's too good for the league. He's only back because of the situation in Russia. So he could be one for your team to, to, to put in there. And obviously, Martin Olsen as well with a full season under his belt. Uh, he's a kind of a left back. Maybe we might get a few more assists. Uh, 90 points last year. But don't forget, he started in a really poor hack and side in that start of the season and then got a move to Malmo mid-season. So I'd expect him to get more points this year, this uh, this time around this year. Um, in terms of, if you look at the other top five, rounding it off, Larson, I would say, is almost, you've almost got to get him in your team, really. 8, 8 million, 142 points. I know, Steve, you're going to have him, so uh, I'm, I'm looking at that already in, my, in the back of my mind. Um, and then you've got the likes of, if you're looking for maybe cheaper options, Mado Jarjway was in my team. He was 5.5 at the start of the season. Uh, I would say that um, Gustav Henriksen could be an interesting one, potentially at 5.5 as well. And Leo Weisenden as well, and Strand. Uh, Simon Strand, but he, Simon Strand's got a bit of a temper at times, so sometimes he gets cards, which happened to me last season, he got sent off at one point, which really annoyed me. <laughs> so he got 127 points, though, so he's a, he's a very big player, uh, fantasy-wise. Um, and then if you're looking at Eurogarden, I'll just round it off with maybe Eurogarden and Hammerby. Um, Hammerby, I would say, you, you, you in your fantasy team, big decision in terms of do you go for Selmani up front or do you go for Ludvigsen at 10 million, 147 points last season. You've also got Joel Nielsen, who, um, as I mentioned last, you know, he's got a big move and he, he he got 166 points last year. Incredible. And he's only 6.5 million. So that is a, potentially that is a big one. He might be the kind of player who everyone signs and then his price goes up. He was obviously, as I mentioned, at Miami last year. But don't forget that incredible Miami defence. Will Hammerby have a similar defence? Um, and then I would say, if you're looking at Eurogarden, the, the big question marks for Eurogarden are... Um, do you go for Edvardson, obviously, at 10 million, 153 points? He was Degafor's main man last year. Kalle Holmberg is a little bit cheaper, 7.5, but but only half the points last season, less than half the points. But he's he's going to contend with Edvardson with that striking role. So, you know, will there be rotation? Haksavanovic, 12 million is a huge price. Uh, Magnus Eriksson, 11 million. But Magnus Eriksson, I think, was the top scoring player. He got 192 points. So where do you get your diff players from? That's a decision to be made. Um so yeah, those are some of the players maybe to consider for your team. Yeah, my advice would be get Johan Larsen in your side. He takes a lot of the set pieces and he chips in with assists and sometimes goals and they get clean sheets. I like the look of I after doing my research here, because I don't know who's gonna start, but the Hammerby defence, they will keep clean sheets under Marty Sifuentes. You mark my words. And so I'm looking at the goalkeeper. I'll be looking at who's going to start at the back four for them. And um, from, from your garden, Magnus uh, Eriksson is uh, is usually a must-have, isn't he? I know he's expensive, um, but that, that would be my advice for the top five, personally. I think Hammerby are a one to watch. You get a bit of value there. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And um, I think Hammerby, I don't know much about his fences, but I think we'll learn about him a lot. And uh, we've mentioned on Patreon we're going to be having some team analysis and some player analysis, and I think as the weeks go on, you know there are certain players that we'll we'll certainly focus on. We're we'll, we'll, we're bringing back player and focus this year on, on Patreon, so you're getting full value there in the uh, Kitchen or Clinton tier um, if you do get in there. So so yeah, Hammerby you have some decent players, and it's just about I think with Hammerby and Uruguay, it's just about who's going to be key men for them, f- figuring that out. But uh, that's a little bit of fancy. We'll we'll come back on fancy uh, as the show goes on more fantasy soon let's get on with the team previews and sixth place we're up to now who have you got uh, in this particular spot uh, Jonathan yeah uh in sixth place I've got Kalmar 
now i know our good friend wesson could be happy with that the media discovery have predicted him in eighth uh, predicted camo in eighth um last season they finished sixth, so i've got them to finish exactly uh where they finished last season i think if i'm right in saying in the last year's season preview i predicted camo i think ninth when the media had them in 14th so the media thought they'd be in the relegation playoff last year and I, I did say on last year's preview podcast, I think they're going to have a, a good year. I never thought that the year would end with them finishing top six. But uh, I did think that with Henry Reedstrom there, they'd, they'd, they'd be a lot better than the media predicted. And I'm quite happy to say I was, I was, I was correct on that one. My reasoning with Kalmar sixth, I just think that they are, uh, I think I think Reedstrom, I mean, a bit of a disclaimer here. With Sweden getting knocked out of the uh, World Cup, there's, there's rumours that Reedstrom might actually be in for the potential Sweden national team job. Now, if that was to happen, obviously that that changes everything in terms of Kalmar's prediction and, and that that would sort of te- change it, sort of uh, put their season to dust, really. It would be a huge problem for them. Um, but he is of that level to start being considered for big jobs. And the, the big thing for him is he's a, he's a Kalmar legend, he's a Kalmar hero, played for them for many, many years. And I think obviously that side of it means that maybe he, he might want to stick around a little bit more. So that's that's probably the positive side of it. But if he continues, he, you never know. He may well have big clubs looking at him. Um, what do I like about Kalmar? New signing, Ricardo Friedrich, uh, come from Glimt, Buda Glimt. He's uh, supposedly very good with the ball at his feet. And this is a bit of a David De Gea type situation, I think, with, with Kalmar. I think they they got rid of Lucas Hag Johansson, who I actually quite, I actually quite like. Um, it very much reminds me of, remember when Pep Guardiola joined and he, he just sort of binned off um, just, yeah, Joe Hart. Hart just immediately? Yeah. And everyone was like, why? They've let Lucas Yahag Johansson go on a free transfer to Vegeta in Denmark. And they brought in Friedrich from Glimt. And I think the rationale here is that um, with this sort of possession style that Kalmar like to play, I think they want a more of a ball-playing goalkeeper. Uh, you know, you talk about fancy, he, he could be an interesting one as well, Friedrich. He's a, he's a, I think he's from Brazil. He's uh, a top talent, I tell you. I really am a big fan of that goalkeeper. And he's going to go really well. And of course, Kalmar have to bring a Brazilian in, don't they, every single year. <laughs> I'll fail. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I really think that that potentially there's, uh, you know, it looks like Riesstrom has decided that he wants a keeper who's a little bit better with his feet. And if that works, then obviously that could lead to more clean sheets. That could lead to more points. And, you know, I think it's an interesting one. Haggy Hansen was quite a good shot stopper, I thought. But um, obviously he's been allowed to move. And he's got, you know, he's got a decent move to Denmark at the end of the day. So it's not it's not the end of the world maybe for him, but um, a big decision from, from, from Riesstrom there. Don't forget, Kalmar had the third best possession in the league last season, a 56% possession, which is sensational when you consider that the year before that they were so so kind of poor. Um, other other kind of, they've brought in another keeper as well, Jacob Shinbug. So I'm not entirely sure, will they rotate? Who knows? Um, Douglas Bergfist, he's back. Uh, he, quite an interesting situation here. Well, no, in terms of geopolitics, not very, not very nice, but he moved to Ukraine in January. Uh, the war came along. And he came back a, a few months later. So he's uh, done a kind of a Grandpa Simpson uh, meme on Twitter and kind of walked out the door and come straight back. So, um, or a reverse one. He's, uh, he's walked out and come back. So he was a big player for Kalmar last season, Bergfist. Uh, so it's good to, probably for them, it's good to have him back. Although obviously, terrible situation to, to the backdrop of it. Um, you know, in, in defence, they've still got kind of solid defence. There's been a lot of change at Kalmar. And I think... There's been a lot of departures, and that just shows you that I think Riesdrom knows what he wants. He he's kind of like possession he, man, isn't he? Big possession. Yeah, he's had a year to assess this squad, and he's gone. You know what? You're out. You're out. You're out. You're out. Sebastian Rings left. He's gone to Wiesla Krakow in Poland. Um, they brought in a lad called David Christian Olsen from Arlesen, who you may know. He got eight assists in August last season, so it could potentially be a, an interesting one there at left back. Um, then they've got a lot of new signings in in midfield. Nahom Giermeier Netabai, I think, will be a, a good signing. Um, I really liked him when he was at uh, Warburg and then Sirius. So um, he's moved around quite a bit in the last few years. And now he's gone to Kalmar on a free free transfer. Didn't, he didn't get many goals and assists last year, but I sh- he looked like a very solid player. And in Riesdrom's system, he looks like he's playing him a little bit higher up the pitch. Um, Axel Lindahl joins as well from Buda Glimt. Um, uh, sorry, he was on loan at Degafors last season. And um, he's also got quite a lot of assists, 16 uh, assists, in 71 games for Degafors. I think he could be an interesting uh, wide player. Uh, they've still got the likes of a couple of Brazilians. Romario is still there. Oliver Berg, obviously, is the one that everyone talks about. One of the best players in Osvenskan last year. 12 goals, five assists in 30 games. 
28 years old now, but he's he's the key man, really. Um, and then a couple of signings that I think will be quite interesting. Uh, I think Simon Scrab potentially could be a massive coup. I don't know how he'll adapt, but um, he's a former Brescia and North Shopping man, and he was sold. You know, North Shopping, who, who by the way, have done a lot of, um, they've made a lot of money in the last few years. North Shopping made 2.5 million when they sold him to Brescia uh, a couple of years ago, and he's back on the free transfer um, for Kalmar. That could be a huge pickup. He can play anywhere, really. Uh, literally, he can play at forward, attacking midfield, left wing, right wing, right mid, left mid. Really versatile player at 27. Um, he was a big player when he was at North Shopping. So I think if he can adapt, that's that's potentially a big signing. And then obviously it's rounded off by sort of the um, players that, you know, Riesstrom tends to like, like Lars Satra, Rasmus Jostet, um, players like that, and, and young players like Isaac Janssen. They've also signed a player from uh, uh, called Kevin Jensen. He's going to be one to look out for. Um, he signed from Lions Corner Boys. He was described as one of Sweden's hottest young attacking talents by Football Direct. And um, he joins on a free. He was wanted by Hammerby and Djurgården. So five goals, five assists in the Super Retin. 20 years old right winger. One to watch. Come off a sixth place then. And uh, I mean, certainly keep your eye on them. Uh, they play a particular style, which might interest a lot. Seventh and eighth. Uh, you've predicted two sides who I know you've got a soft spot for, Jonathan. So I'll let you... Go through these two teams. Your cat is your cat is going away, so maybe. Yeah, well, this is my other cat. Yeah, <laughs> this is my other cat. Who? Uh, <laughs> what is it about these season previews? Every single time, he's liking a bit of maybe Kalmar or maybe one of these next two teams. Yeah, definitely. I've got se- seventh place EF Koi Yotaborg, and I've got eighth place Bickle Hacken. Uh, the two Gothenbo teams back to back. Last season, EF Koi finished eighth, and Bickle Hacken finished twelfth. The media have got EF Core seventh, um, which is where I've got them, and the media have got Beko Hacken ninth. Um, I've got them one place higher, obviously. Uh, I am a little bit unsure about these places, I have to say. A um, bit of controversy in the mid table areas, but let's look at EF Core to start with, who I've got in seventh place. Uh, weirdly enough, I quite like what they've done. Now, the, the transfers haven't been, you know, remember last time last year we were talking about Ham- Marek Hamzik and you know, all the fanfare and everything like that. Um, but I, th- I think that this season they, uh, they've they lost a lot of t- sort of players, I think. And I think that could help them regenerate. I think they lost a lot of um, dead wood, really. Um, you know, they've had some players, some controversial situations. That some players have left under a bit of a cloud um, and things like that. But uh, they have lost some quality. But I do think that they've trimmed the, trimmed the fat quite a bit on, on this time this season. So... Yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited by EF Core. I think they've got a chance to regenerate a little bit and maybe just consolidate. Not a huge amount of turnover, like I say. The bit I think the big transfer is the goalkeeper, uh, Varna Hahn. He is signed on a free transfer from Go Ahead Eagles, 29 year old, and he's got good reports when he was at Hirenbeen. And I think he's a solid keeper who I think he even captained Hirenbeen at one point. Um, he replaces uh, Janis Janis Anestis, who's gone back to Greece. Uh, and I think that's a good signing. I think he he's someone who, you know, he's um, he'll be a solid keeper from what I've heard of all reports. They've also got uh, Gustav Lilienberg, who's another young keeper who's been who's come back to Sweden from Southampton. He was actually at Arsenal for a bit, Fulham. Uh, he left the EF Core in 2017 and he's returned to England. So probably he'll be a backup, I imagine. He's only 18 years old. Um, as the EF Core always tend to do, they, they bring back some of their old players. Emil, Emil Salimonson has come back from Japan on a free transfer. He's 32 now. You know, there's always that old people's home description of Iacor, and they've got a lot of old players. Um, Oscar Vent, 36. Uh, Matthias Biasmir, 36. Um, you know, Gustav Svensson, 35. Sebastian Eriksson, 33. Marcus Berg, 35. To be a son of 32. And to be honest, those are their best players. So that's why I've got them mid table. I don't think they'll go much higher than that. I don't think they have the mobility. But I think. What they lack in maybe that athleticism, I think they will make up for in experience and maturity. And I think that will take them to a kind of solid mid-table place. So I think the likes of, you know, Svensson, Simon Tern, uh, Sebastian Eriksson, they've got uh, Amir Alamari, he's signed from Halmstad. Uh, had a good, strong season last year at Halmstad in midfield, 29 games, three goals. Um, he's been signed for cheap. So I think, you know, he's a bit a bit more youth and ex- youthfulness in, in midfield there, 23. Um, and then obviously they've got Oscar Wilhelmsen, who was in my tent to watch last year. He's 18. Club's youngest goal scorer of all time. 
uh, when he scored at 15. And he's a player that I think this year he'll get more minutes and he, he's uh, someone I really think that can go on in, in the future. But I think with EF Core, it's, it's a case of kind of experience. They may finish slightly lower than seventh. I don't know. But I don't think they'll be too much higher than, than seventh. Um, Eric Sorger, as well as someone up front, they've signed from um, DC United. He's played in the Netherlands. Didn't do a huge amount in uh, MLS. He's an Estonian international who's, um, he got 78 goals in 91 games earlier in, in his career at Flora Tallinn. Um, he's someone who will expect to score goals, maybe rotate with Marcus Berg. But uh, all in all, I think Berg will lead the line. Tobias Sano will be relied on for goals. Uh, and what excites me is always with AFC, they've got some good young talent. But the question is with Mika Stara there, will, will, he actually, will they actually get any game time? That's, that's the question I'm not sure about. Star is quite a boring manager, isn't he? I must say, I'm not a great fan of his uh, style personally. Um, it sounds like they've got an interesting mix of some youth, but also you could almost call them geriatric Gothenburg, maybe with some of these older veterans. So, um, yeah, Hecken, you've got them just a little bit below IFK here. So, uh, how do you see? I mean, Hecken were a big disappointment last year, weren't they, compared to what was expected of them? But I'm guessing sort of mid-table right now is is not bad, not bad for them. Yeah, and it's funny you call them, Ger- you know, Jerry Atcher Gotham, but ironically, they've got one of the best academies in, in, in the country. And uh, if you look at some of the young players, you know, tune in for the 10 to watch, I, I might name some of them in that as well. But, you know, you've got Philip Ambrose, who's 18. You've got Lucas Carhead, who's 19. You've got Hussein Carneal, who's 18. Um, Hossam Aish is 26. You know, he's, he's, he's still got youth on his side. Um but they've lost a lot of players, uh, of course, just before I move on to Hacken, sorry. Um, Alassane Youssef obviously left in the summer uh, to Belgium. August Erlingmark's gone. Paka lagamir has gone at 25. Uh, Marek Hamzik obviously didn't stick around. Colbyn torsen has gone. Uh, Robin Sword has gone. So they have lost a lot of players. And I think that will allow them to bring through some of these younger players like Bill Helmson, uh, Alphonse Nigard, maybe one to look out for as well. So, yeah, they've got a mix of... Li- it's literally like not really much in the middle, isn't it, Steve? It's like you, if you had a depth chart, You'd have everyone under 19 and then everyone over 33 kind of thing. It's kind of one or the yeah, other. Yeah, it's, it's a weird um, mix, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. But moving on to Hacken, uh, another one. I'd, last season, the two I got really wrong was AIK and Hacken. I, I predicted Hacken second. And they were absolutely nowhere near it. They were horrendous, really, um, for most of the campaign, I'll be honest. Um, started the season really, really, really badly. And obviously, it led to their manager leaving. Um and never really recovered from that. Obviously, they brought in um, Per Matthias Hogmo, who's an experienced manager in Scandinavia. Obviously, he's been national team coach at Norway. He's been at Diff as well, good year garden. He replaced Andreas Alm. And I just think that this is a year of consolidation for Hacken. They've always been quite exciting in their recruitment, but obviously, they've not been able to host the Gothia Cup for a few years. I think financially, that's affected them slightly. They have lost some players, I think, as well. They've lost uh, Godswill Apollo, who's gone to no shopping. Uh, Oscar Sperrison's left as well. He's gone to uh, Vibe Boys. Martin Olsen obviously left to, Ham- uh, to Malmo back in the summer. Uh, and a few others have left. The big the big departure really is Patrick Wallemark. That's a huge loss. Um, sold to Feyenoord for a club record 3 million plus 17% sell-on fee. Uh, he was sensational last year. I wrote a blog about him on Scout. And, you know, in the last phase of that season, he was like Irene Robin. He was so good um, and really carried them to their sort of final um you know, season finishing, placing in, uh, I think they finished ninth. Sorry, no, they finished 12th. So they've lost some big players. The thing with Ham- the thing with Hacken, of course, is that they've got, you know, some forward options, the likes of Ibrahim Sadiq, who's a new signing they've got from uh, from Norseland. He's someone that they expect to maybe do well. He's got a good education at, at Right to Dream. He's got good technique, six goals in 63 games for Norseland. Um, Alexander Yeremiev, Yessi Tuominen. The big player that they're going to miss is Benny Traore because, of course, they've been experimenting with him as a striker, as a forward, you know, an out and out number nine uh, in pre season. And he'd been looking, you know, fairly good. And it seemed like they they were talking him up and had some maybe expectations for him to adapt to that new new position. Obviously, he played as a winger last season. Um, but the huge blow and the huge bad news for, for Hacken fans in that sense is his big injury, uh, Benny Traore. He's going to be out for, you know, looking at potentially six to eight months uh, with a broken leg. And I really feel sorry for him because he's a really upbeat character. He brought a lot of excitement last season. He's someone I've got high hopes for. He was in my tent to watch last year. Um, he's only 19. You know, when you're in a new environment as well, you know, second season, you, you're raring to go, looking forward to, you know, maybe um, 
the challenges ahead and improving on the, your first season and, and you've got a lower uh, serious leg fracture, which is, you know, really a big problem. Um, the club doctor said that it's, it's going to be six to eight months and obviously Troy is in a lot of pain. He's thanked the club for their support, but um, it's, a, it's a real blow for them. And they might even have to uh, dip into the market to kind of get someone in to replace him because um, they've had a few 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 injuries in recent weeks uh, on some good young players. And uh, it's a real, real shame for Hacken and the fans. Um, the good news for Hacken fans is Gustav Bergwin's just signed a new contract. He'll stick around. He didn't want to leave the club on a free. He had a lot of interest. And I think that, you know, that that's really loyal of him to sort of um, try and get the club maybe some money for themselves. So that's a good sign of, of that. They brought in Mikhail Rygaard from uh, LSK Lodz in Poland. He's an experienced centre midfielder. Oscar Udenas is one to watch, a uh, 19-year-old uh, wide player. Uh, and I just think, generally speaking, they're... In defence, they've strengthened a lot. Thomas Totland, that you mentioned on the uh, Norway podcast, by the way. I'd like to get your opinion on him. Evian Hofland as well, as a veteran sign from Rosenborg for free, 33-year-old. Um, they've also brought in a player from the Nigerian Premier League, Franklin Tebo Ochena, who is quite highly tipped. And Kadir Hodzic as well, who's, who's um, he was at uh, Mialbi. So the defence could actually be stronger this year. But it's just a case of can they all gel and click and that kind of thing. You know, the likes of Holland and Tottenham, can they come in immediately? Um, and that's why I'm just not sure about them. So I've got them in that position there in eighth. I mean, what are your thoughts on Tottenham and uh, and uh, the other guy, uh, Hovland? Thomas Tottenham is a very good player. I rate him highly. Had a great year at Tromso, and um, it's a good move for him actually. I think he. Uh, it's a shame for Tromso, but a uh, great move for uh, for Heck and. Hovland is an interesting one, sort of a solid defender. Getting on a bit, sometimes makes a few mistakes, though, um, which which concerns me for Hecken. Um, and But, yeah, d- by and large, not bad signings. But I said that about Alexander Serdlin, didn't he? And he kind of, he didn't flop at Hecken, did he? But he had some problems, nevertheless. So, uh, uh, yeah, mid take. I mean, one big problem they did have, and the same with IFK as well, home form just simply wasn't good enough was it no but i mean it was an anomaly last season they were they were horrendous they were really poor uh, hack and it's almost it's almost like right off and start again you know if you look at um they were lucky to actually avoid relegation playoffs really and if you look at the first uh part of their season they didn't win a game till may you know lost three in a row at the beginning of the season you know, didn't, like I say, didn't win until they beat Varberg in May. And then they went on a really good run, one four back to back. But but really, I think Europe was a big distraction for them as well. I don't think they really had the squad for it um, after the really good campaign the previous year. And, um, you know, I, I, yeah, like I say, they, you know, they lost to Aberdeen, didn't they? And it was a good year for them in that sense, getting some European money in. But I just don't, I don't think they really had the, the depth of the squad and quality for it, really. And I think that struck, you know, then towards the end of the season, it just kind of tailed off as well. And you know, they beat North Shopping 5-0 in October. But after that, they just kind of they only won one more game for the rest of the season in, in, in sort of six, seven, eight games. Just all kind of, it was just a bit of a nothing season, really. There have always been a team that have a kind of high press and a quite an aggressive, uh, fluid style. But it seems to have gone off the boil a little bit under Hogmo. He's a bit more, he's a bit more laboured in, in his approach. I just wonder with the pitch, they've got a really small pitch. Is that is that a suited style for them? Let's see. But uh, yeah, I've got them where they are. I just don't think they'll have um, a really strong season. But I do have one of my, their players in my 10 to watch. So uh, tune out for that. So IFK Gothenburg in seventh. Hecken in eighth is your prediction, Jonathan. In ninth place, a bit of a surprise here, I must say. And it's a team that we don't tend to talk about too much on the Nordic Football Podcast. Although we did have a great interview from one of their players not too long ago. This may be a surprise to some listeners. Who are you going with in ninth place? Yes, I have got Sirius in ninth place. Uh, so I think fans of one certain team might be a bit worried about where I've got them. Maybe they haven't heard their team come up yet. But um, yeah, I, I like Sirius's business actually. Uh, just on a side note, Steve, by the way, this is the biggest, am- this is the, hu- this, you know, we talk about kind of transfers in Osvenskan. This is the biggest amount of uh, outgoings in Osvenskan for five years. Uh, since Alexander Isak left uh, to to go to Dortmund, um, there's been huge amounts of players leaving this league this 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 summer, uh, this sorry this winter. Um, 
so yeah, that, that just that just shows you that there's a lot of uh, players leaving. Fifth, I think fifth, clubs so far have brought in uh, just I think fifteen, just over fifteen million uh, pounds in general. So it just goes to show you. Sorry, eighteen eighteen million. No, sorry, four, <laughs> 42 million they've made, which is huge for the league. It's massive. They've made 42 million in transfers. I just wanted to point that out uh, and only brought in 5 million. So you see the quality leaving the league, um, by the way. Why do I mention that now? Just because I, I think I like Sirius's business. I think they've got done really good transfer businesses this, this window. Um, and they excite me. So that is why I've got them where I have them. Um, just going to go through some of the players they've signed and, and just, you know, some of the reasons I've got, okay, the, the mood in the camp, by the way, first of all, seems really, really good. Um, I really like some of the creative midfielders they've got, some of the exciting, um, I think they've got a really exciting midfield. I think they've got goals in that team for sure. Um, and I think my big question for them is how will the new look defence uh, cope? They've got a new look defence. And I think that's the baby, the area that they need to sort out. And that's why I've got them ninth. Um, if you look at kind of where they've been before, you know, last season, they finished 11th. Uh, the media have predicted them in 10th. So it's kind of, you know, similar, but I had them quite far down. I, I don't think I really expected much of them last year. I thought they would really struggle. Um, but to be, to the credit, the new manager that came in, um, who replaced obviously Henrik Riestrom, uh, he, he, Daniel Backstrom, he's done quite well. And uh, I'm quite quite excited by what some of the squad members of Sirius have had to say about him, actually. Uh, let's look at their transfers. They've got Tommy Vaiho, an experienced player from New York, and he's been loaned in for the season in goal. So he'll compete with David Mitov Nielsen potentially. And, you know, he's a sort of experienced campaigner. He's aging a bit, but I think he's got the quality to beat a team like Sirius and do well. Uh, Christopher de Grasse comes back from VVV Venlo, former EF core man. Um, he's played for Arsenal as well as, as a youth. Um, he will come in at centre back and I think could be quite good. Marcus Mattison as well was a, you know, he's, 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 he converted to midfield last season, converted to the centre-back, sorry, last season and did well. Uh, Andreas Murbeck comes in from Lanskrona Boys after a good year in Super Etten. A lot of clubs signing players from Lanskrona, by the way. And then in midfield, I'll tell you, the, some of their signings I'm, I quite like. Uh, Philip Rogic from AIK, um, probably just not quite good enough for AIK now, 28, but still a solid centre midfielder. Uh, he'll get the job done there. Uh, Philip Olsen comes in again from Lance Corner Boys. He's someone who people sort of say is quite an exciting player to watch, potentially. Kevin Wright, uh, he comes from Ordebro, who got relegated. He's a, just a decent um, left-sided player, can play left-back or left-mid, former Chelsea Academy, by the way. Um, Patrick Carson Lagermere from EF Core Jotterborg. Now, he's he's always been like a fan favourite at EF Core, uh, and it's just not really worked out for him at EF Core in recent years. He's had, he had the injury problems. I think this is a fresh start for him. And at, at 25, I think he's got a lot to offer still. Um, if he can sort of recover that early promise, then that's a really good signing. Then they've got the likes of Laurent Shabani, who I, I really think is a good player. Uh, six assists last season in 28 games. Um, Mustafa Zaidan, I like him as well. I think he's going to have a good season and I'll talk about him um, maybe on the 10 to watch. You never know. Uh, then they've got other young players like Herman Siogrel, uh, Jamie Roach. And in attack, obviously, they've kept Christian Kouaku, which is big. You know, he was really, really good last season, goal scoring wise, uh, a lot in a lot of players' fantasy teams. And I think this could be a breakout year for Eddie Silisufai. Um, I've always quite liked him, the 22 year old striker uh, of Kosovo and uh, I think Kosovo background. Um, he was at Falkenberg when they got relegated. He's got 11 goals in 62 games in Osvenskan. Um, he joined in the summer 2020 and was all right. But I think he's someone I'm looking at and think, could he break out? So I think, and don't forget Yu Yu Sagita. Yu Yu Sagita, of course, he was so good in that serious team under Riedstrom with um, Stefano Vecchia. He's still around. So they've got a lot of attacking options there. The likes of Patrick Enwadike and at the back, Tim Bjorkstrom, Marcus Mattison. A lot, you know, if the defence can kind of gel, then I think they could have a really good year. That's still a Suvai is one of the hardest pronounced names to pronounce in this whole league i must say <laughs> it's a real challenge so good stuff about Sirius there in ninth place and uh i mean i was personally surprised to see you have them that high but and especially to see them above your next uh team in 10th place and that's norshipping who i mean i i don't know why maybe just because of their reputation i presume they would be sort of challenging around mid-table at the worst but uh i mean they still might be but uh a brave call here for you were uh, to predict them in 10th Jonathan, what, what's what's not to like about Norshipping at the moment? 
Yeah, I mean, the reason I've got um, Sirius above them, I could get it this one drastically wrong, to be fair, but Daniel Backstrom, um, just, just reading some comments in pre-season, uh, Mustafa Zidane in particular had, was really praiseworthy of the, the mood in the squad. They've signed a lot of players who've got something to prove as well. You know, Zidane, for example, used to be at Aston Villa as a youth and has been around the block and kind of, a lot of their players are kind of, like Silly Sufi is another one. Um, you know, Kouaku is another one. They've just kind of been around the block, not really found a home and then, I got a feeling that that, that kind of Silly Sufi could be that kind of player. Zidane said that there's a really positive atmosphere around the club. He said there's a lot of players with things to prove. He said that, um, I mean, he said the intense the sessions have been really intensive in pre-season and, and, and obviously they want to play that attacking playing style. Don't forget, Backstrom was a um, former Swedish under-19 assistant manager um, and also was at Malmö for a while. So I think he's growing into his role maybe and that, that's why I quite like uh, Sirius. Nor shopping, I'm a little bit concerned for. Um, the first thing to say is that they have made a huge amount of money, by the way. Uh, some of the signings they've, some of the players they've sold. I mean, Haksabanovic, okay, they had to give West Ham, I think, 1.5 million of, of that 6 million euros they got. But, you know, that's 4.5 million is a huge amount for Svenskan. They've also sold the likes of, um, you know, they, they, they've made a lot of money in these recent years. Anyway. Carl Bjork is one that's gone. Yeah, Rasmus Lauritsen in the past, they they, they, they obviously got rid of. And uh, Isaac Bergman, Johansson. Massive loss for them, I think, but gone to for four million pounds to FC Copenhagen. Um, Alexander Franson, he's lost left on a free, but I think that's a massive blow. But anyway, the point is they've made they've made a lot of money, but I also think they've lost massive, massive players. Um, first thing, Sam, Samuel Alec Benro has gone to China, uh, league's top scorer, seventeen goals. He's gone to China for th- three million, apparently. Um, don't forget, they only signed, they bought. It's the it's the it's the deal of the century, really. They they bought him for a hundred k from Rosenborg. I mean, what what were Rosenborg doing selling him for a hundred k? Um, <laughs> well, that's that's exactly a lot of Rosenborg fans would, would ask that question, and it's been a big problem that they've had. Yeah, in, 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 yeah, he's gone to China for three million, although it's kind of stalled a bit, and there's a bit of weird, not entirely sure what's going on, but he's, he's not there at the moment. Um, massive loss for them, really. I, I would have liked to see him stay. I had him a lot higher than I than when he left. I was like, wow, that's a huge blow, as you've mentioned. There, Carl Bjork's gone to Bromby 400k. Um, Christopher Neiman will have to be the man to get the goals, probably. Uh, Franson is going as a big, big loss for them. I think he's been a <clears throat> key man for them. Won the league. <clears throat> Excuse me. Bergman Anderson again is a top, top talent. Nineteen-year-old Haksavanovic. Don't forget, he only left, um, you know, back end of in, in twenty twenty-one. So still not maybe over him leaving. I just think they've lost so many top players over the years. I think it might start to have an impact. Uh, Henrik Kastegren as well. He he's gone to Legia Gdansk. He was a regular for them. Played twenty-seven games at centre back. So, you know, I'm just a little bit concerned that the squad's weak. I think Alec Benro is a huge loss. The positive side of it, and that's where I could get things wrong. Obviously, they've still got a good spine. Oscar Janssen, uh, Philip Dargestal's come back home. Obviously, he 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 was he moved to Chimchi and he's he's come back. Uh, they've still got Linus Varkvist. Um, Ekpolo's come from Hacken. They do have some good players, don't get me wrong. Uh, Jonathan Levi's still there. Jacob Ortmark could be a good signing from uh, Sirius. Uh, Abdul Razak is, is a decent player as well. So they've made some good signings. Uh, up front, the man that will be expected to get the goals alongside Neiman is uh, Emen Markovic. He's been signed from the start, obviously in Norway, a Norwegian player. But he only got one goal in 28 games in the league to Serian, even though he got 16 goals last. Uh, he got 16 goals in, in all in total in 38 games. But I think he's got a bit to prove. Emmanuel Chabo is from someone from the youth team, maybe we might be talking about as well, 19 year old forward. But I just think they've lost so much talent that I think it may have an impact. And and, and in terms of the preseason, they did okay. But one game worried me with no shopping, Steve, and that was the uh, Swedish Cup game against Hammerby, where they were 2 0 up and lost 3 2. And I just, I'm slightly concerned about that. You know, Neiman got two goals in that one, but they then sort of gave it away, basically. And Hammerby turned around really, really well. And I, I'm just worried, you know, n- uh, Ricard Norling has said in pre-season that he he's still looking for the balance of the team that, that three sort of three five three three five two or three four three system they tend to play. I I I, I just don't think they've quite got the balance right. They've lost a lot in defence and midfield. They haven't sorted out their system and they've just lost so many key players that um, I'm worried. The only positive I would say is they've got so much money that maybe in the summer they could address it and, and bring in some top players. Yeah, potentially some concerning times there for Norshipping and concern for me now looking at your next team. Um, very disappointed to see 
that Anders Torstensen uh, did not renew his contract at Mialby. Um I have to say the interview that you did with him uh, last season was one of the best we've ever had. I'm a huge fan of Torstensen. So Mialby, is, I think it's a big loss for them. But uh, tell us a bit about their new manager. And you've got them down 11th. So, I mean, that's pretty secure sort of position. Do you worry that they're going to really miss Torstensen? Yeah, first thing first, uh, shout out to Anders, a, a, a top, top manager. He did so well there. They nearly broke the all Svenskan record for clean sheets. Uh, I think they were 18 minutes away, roughly, from breaking the all-time all Svenskan clean sheet record. They, they, Torsenson decided not to not to continue, basically. I think they, they he would have had a chance to stay if he'd wanted, but I think he, he didn't, in the end, uh, come to, to agree terms. I think that will in fact affect them a little bit. Um, last season, I had them... Um, I had them. I can't remember where I had them. I think they. I thought they might even go down. Like, I think playoff was it? You yeah, I was worried about them. This this year, I've got them eleventh. Um, obviously, finished ninth last year, and the media have got them to finish thirteenth. So they media thinks they might be sucked into a relegation battle potentially. I'll just explain very briefly on this one why I don't think they. They'll, I think they'll be okay. I think Andreas Brandstrom, he is their new manager. Uh, he's quite highly rated. I think he he won promotion to Osvenskan with Dalkurd. He got Jörn shopping to the promotion playoff place, so um, where they lost to Kalmar a couple of years ago, and he used to be an assistant manager to Jensko Staffsen at, at Hadrick Split um, in the former North shopping manager. I think he's a decent manager actually, and um, from what I hear, maybe he could could do all right. In terms of their the players that have come in, um, they've kept some of their you know players like Carlos Gracia, Ivan Krišak, who will be important. Um, even though they've lost like the likes of Max Watson, who's gone to Slovenia. I know you liked him, Steve. Um, they've brought in a young lad from Malmo, Noah Isla, who I think will be important. Um, he is a 19-year-old centre-back, could get some game time. Adam Stahl has come in from Sirius on a free transfer. I don't think the defence will be as good as last year. I don't think it'll be that kind of clean sheet machine, but you never know. Um, they've still got some of the players from that season. Uh, up front... They've brought in Rasmus Biedersheim Paul back from uh, he's from Rosenborg. He he was um, very prolific at, at Halmstad in Superettan. Didn't really get much game time, I don't think at Rosenborg by all accounts. But he he he's come back. Um, Mamadou Mora is there. Jacob Bergstrom, of course, is still there. The squad's a little bit lighter and weaker, but I I just think that at what I've seen from what I've seen in preseason and from what I've heard, I think they've got enough maybe to be okay. They just brought Jetmar Haliti in, which is a big signing, and Alvin Morfelt has come in also from Varberg Boys. Um, so. I think they'll be okay, but I do think that they could be looking over the shoulders if, if they don't start well. So I've got them in that place. Goalkeeper's got to be the biggest concern, surely. I mean, Carl Johan Eriksson, who I've actually just looked, he moved to Dundee United and he hasn't played a single minute for them yet. Incredibly, uh, they, their number one, Benjamin Seagreast up there, must be doing pretty well to keep him out of the side. But goalkeeper's got to be the biggest concern in the spot, surely. Yeah, I mean, he he was a he was the best probably keeper in the league last season. I think he was in our on our team of the season. They've got Samuel Brolin on a two year loan from AIK. I think he might get some game time. And they've also got a um, a pretty talented keeper called Noel Tornquist, twenty year old. He has previously trained with your your old, your your favourite team Leeds. Um, he's also trained with Watford, Sampdoria, and Hellas Verona. So obviously maybe didn't get a deal, but um, a young keeper who maybe has something to offer. Um. With Carl Johan Eriksson, you know what Sweden's like, Steve. He could be back in the summer. You know what I mean? It could be one of those in and out. Yeah. It kind of reeks already of that, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know what's happened there, but um, he obviously he was top. But I just think that all in all, they, I'm, I'm sort of encouraged by the forwards. I think they've got enough goals in that team to just about stay above water, and they've got some good, they've got some good players. To be fair to them, Otto Rosengren, someone to look out for, centre midfielder, 18 years old. I think he's a lot of people are talking about him. Okay, so that completes sort of the mid-table predictions that you've got there. Kalmar in sixth, IFK Gothenburg in seventh, Hecken in eighth, Sirius ninth, Norshipping tenth, and Mialbi in eleventh. Now, from this section of teams here, there's a lot of teams. Uh, is there sort of two or three fantasy players that caught your eye, Jonathan, would you say? Yes, I will name one from each team that I think could... could um, Very good. Maybe be one for your team. So, firstly, Kalmar. Uh, Oliver Berg, you can't look past Oliver Berg. Mm. Price has gone up massively this season, so that's one to consider. Is he is he a differential? 
Um, nine million. That that is a lot. That could still be cheap though. P- possibly, yeah. Well, I mean, 167 points. He was he was incredible. Can he can he maintain that level though? Because was it a bit of a one season wonder? I'm not sure. Uh, I would say if you're looking for an alternative, Lars Setra at five million. 104 points was decent in 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 in, in defence. Uh, let's move on to EFK Jotterberg. I would say uh, Oscar Wilhelmsen. I like. He's still quite cheap, um, and I think he will get in the team at times. Uh, only six million, um, but of course Marcus Berg is the main one, 11 million. But that's a big price. Then uh, that's that 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 I'll just pick one for now. In that case, um, I think as a keeper, by the way, Hahn could be an interesting one. Uh, five million if you're looking for a cheap keeper then of course you've got uh move on to hacken serious no shopping and malby so for hacken i would suggest um, perhaps you might want to look at totland mm, i was gonna say i mean he is six million but that's cheap for defenders in sweden yeah i think totland could uh i don't know a huge amount about him but question is will hacken keep clean sheets that's what you got to bear in mind but totland's the one i'm gonna put forward um, Udenas, if you're looking for an outsider, I just wonder if you'll get enough game time. Uh, then for who else? We've got Sirius. I would say uh, I've got my eye on either Z- Mustafa Zidane or Shabani. I think they're both cheap, 6.5 and 5. Very 5. cheap. I mean, they're very cheap. Uh, Yuyu Sagita at 6.5 as well. If he comes back from injury and gets in the team, he's, he's still always been quite a decent player. Kuaku's only 7.5 million, and then Silisufai, 6 million. Um, if he can get in the team there, then I think Silly Sufi could could get goals. So there's quite a few options there. Nor shopping, I would say uh, don't go for their defence because I think they're going to concede a lot of goals. Um, so look further forward maybe. Uh, Jonathan Levi, 9 million, 112 points. He's he's a decent player. Uh, and Neiman started pre-season really well, 9.5. He only got 48 last season, but I think he could have a better season, Neiman. So, um, you know, he could be one to watch. And then uh, finally, Miaubi. It's difficult, Miaubi. I'm not entirely sure how their season's going to go, but Moros, Carlos Moros, was fantastic last year. Only 3.2% ownership, 5.5 million, 103 points. Can't go too far wrong with him. Or if you're looking for a really cheap differential, Krishak, Ivan Krishak, 4.5 million. Probably will start a lot of games, 86 points last season. Um, and that's a very, very cheap price. Thank you very much for that advice, Jonathan. It sounds like maybe Sirius, you could get some good bargains there. Nor shipping, possibly a side to avoid. So uh, that completes this section. Join us after the break where we're going to talk about the relegation uh, battle, uh, teams that might struggle. And uh, we're going to be talking about all three promoted teams in that section as well. So we'll catch you in a bit. Welcome back to part three of the Nordic Football Podcast, Al Svenskan Season Preview 2022. And I've got to say so far, this has been an epic show, Jonathan. Um, I'm always in awe of your fine knowledge and um, you've really brought your A game to the, A star game to the table so far. And uh, I mean, this is, I'm enjoying this one, mate. I appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, like I say, there's been a lot of uh, early mornings and late, late evenings, so... um... Hopefully the quality is decent and uh, you, you're sticking with it and uh, not getting too bored of bored of all the content. But yeah, it's uh, down to the final few now, isn't it? I don't think any fans of any teams can accuse you of being shorthanded <laughs> this year. Um, you might be tested though now because there's certainly some. Well, the, we're going to talk about the newly promoted teams now, and the three teams that have come up are Varnamo, Gifsundsvall, and Helsingborg. A couple of more familiar outfits there, but. I'm going to start with Varnamo. Now, I know nothing about this team at all, apart from the guest we had on at the end of last season, uh, Robin Asterhead, who was their manager. But apart from that, I'm rather in the dark. But um, how do you see them doing? And tell us a bit more about this uh, this new club that uh, I'm sure a lot will uh, not uh, know much about either. Do you know what? I did. I was gonna. I was thinking. I wonder which team you're gonna ask me about first in this bottom section, and uh, it didn't actually surprise me that you're going for Varnamo because I'm uh, not that predictable. A big story. It's a bit like Jerv, isn't it, in Norway? Um, first ever time in 
Norwegian uh, in Norway's top division, obviously in in Sweden. I don't know if that's right, but I think it is. And in Sweden, IFK Varnamo are going to play their first ever game in Sweden's highest football tier this weekend. A historic event for the 110 year old club from Småland. Um, they're playing at IFK Göteborg at Gamla Ullevi. Huge game. Couldn't couldn't ask for a better start, really. At IFK, huge team in the league. Um, and yes, that's. Um, you know the excitement is there. Uh, they've already announced Vianamo that they've arranged some uh, supporter buses to go to the first game of the season. Um, it was described as really wonderful by people within the club, the atmosphere around the club, and everything. And that you know they're, they're getting their fan, they're busing their fans down to, to Gothenburg for that match. Um, it's a story, Vianamo. I mean, getting promoted was unbelievable. To be honest, uh, we had Robin Astor head on that show, and obviously the. Uh, it was a bit of a weird situation that one, wasn't it? Because the next day he was announced moving to Malmo. But if you really listen to the backstory of this club and what they've achieved, it's, it's quite remarkable. Obviously, in 2020, they were in Tier 3. They've had back-to-back promotions. They won Division 1 Soldier in 2020. Uh, they've then won the Super Etten. And they will play in Osvenskan for the first time in their history. Uh, they are a club with a tiny, tiny budget. Um, I think I'm right in saying they only had... Uh, less than five full-time members of staff behind the scenes. I think they have no analyst at, at one point or part-time analyst. Um, really, really sort of a um, skeleton crew uh, of people working at the club. Uh, and so to achieve what they've achieved, it's a lot down to Robin Astor, I have to say, um, you know, and the sort of scouting that went into it and the identification of players, the coaching as well. He was very uh, influential in terms of the coaching. Um, they also have sort of club legends there who who have been there and done it. Um, behind the scenes. So, yeah, this is a, a major story. Um, and let's see how they get on in their first ever year. Yeah, I'm just looking at the geography of the club and they're kind of in that um, in that southern region of uh, Sweden. Natural uh, grass at their stadium. And there's actually nine teams have uh, natural grass this year in Alsvenskan, which is uh, quite a fair number. 5,000 capacity stadium. Only Varberg is a small arena. Wait, what, what sort of chance do they have, though? I mean... I'm just uh, looking uh, at the odds now from Nordic Bet to get relegated, and uh, actually, Gif Sundsvall are the favourites uh, to be relegated, but Varnamo are second favourites here. Do you see them surviving, Jonathan, or not? And and who are the key players going to be? In a word, no, I don't see them surviving. I've got them as bottom of the league. Uh, I think they will be in for a rough season. Uh, I don't think that's kind of a criticism because they shouldn't even really be in Osvenskan, to be honest. And, you know, I don't mean they shouldn't be there, but in terms of, you know, the expectations, it's a, a quite remarkable achievement to, to be anywhere near uh, or Svenskan. So, yeah, I, th- I, I I go against the bookmakers and uh, and um, others in this. Funnily enough, I could be missing a, I could be missing a trick here, to be honest, because the uh, media as well, Discovery, their season prediction, they've got them in um, 11th, which is well clear of relegation. So... Maybe there's something I don't quite know about behind the scenes, or maybe maybe there's some players that are, are better than maybe I I expect, but I I think they're going to struggle, and I, I've got them to finish bottom. So you know, let's let's see how it goes. Uh, in terms of key players, obviously, well, the big thing is they've lost their they've lost their sort of main main man, uh, Robin Astorhead, and he's he's le- him leaving is a, a bit of a blow. I think, you know, I think they would have liked him to continue and and sort of continue the amazing work he's done. So that you know, first of all, that's a problem. And I just think that he obviously he's gone to Malmo, a huge move for him. And I, I, on that podcast, he did mention a few times Malmo and how much he hates Helsingborg and stuff like that. So I get the feeling he's a real Malmo kind of, you know, I get the feeling he loves the club. So I don't think he probably could have turned down any offer from them to return to the club where he used to work. Um, in terms of, you know, how they'll get on, I'll, I'll give you um, some rationale, Steve, in terms of why I don't really think they'll, uh, I think they'll go straight back down. Um, the first thing to say is, let's look at last season, right? Tenth in the Super Retin for XG. Tenth. They won the league. Wow. That is incredible, to be honest. Uh, they were nowhere near. I mean, and that's, you know, near the bottom of the league, closer to the bottom than the top. And I just think that goal-wise, that is a huge thing to make up. They're way behind the likes of um, Norby, even. AFC Eskils doing teams like that. Um there's only about 10 teams in that league anyway. Isn't yeah, <laughs> very limited, very limited or Svenska experience if you look at their squad. Uh, and of course, a new manager. You know, the new manager, Kim Kim Helberg, uh, he's a young coach. He managed at Sylvia in the third tier 
and he was also a shopping assistant manager. I think there's a lot of young kind of uh, Titan coaches coming through in Sweden who have been, um, you know, uh, assistant managers at various clubs and things like that. He's come in and brought in quite a few players from shopping in fact. So I think that, um, you know, th th there may be some players in that squad who, who might maybe do better than I expect. But really, when I look at it, uh, as of time of recording, I just think there's a lot of inexperience in, in this team. Um, in terms of some of the key players, I think the, the big player will be potentially um, Oscar Johansson. He's one of the very few players in that squad with Osvenskan experience. He, he's got 22 goals in 150 games for, for Varnamo. Um, he's a midfielder. Um, he's someone who, you know, is okay maybe and, and can bring some 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 goals to that team. Uh, they brought Harris Avdiu in, former Hacken man. He's he broke the third division. He broke the he broke the league record at Angered uh, last season for goals in the, in a season. He broke the league's record. He scored I think 39 goals in one season. Um, he's someone who's been highly rated in the past, but he he he's had like mental health issues. He had a lot of injuries when he broke through at Hacken. Um, so maybe this is his breakout. He's 24 now. Maybe this is the the year for him potentially to sort of show what he can do. Um, Edvin Basirovic as well in midfield uh, so, and forward. He, he got 13 goals in 46 games for them, but he's got no Allsvenskan experience. Um, they've brought a lad from Volum from uh, Bromer Poikin and Niels Wallenberg. He's an 18 year old. At the back, uh, they've got a player that obviously is must Helberg must have signed Hampus Nastrom. He's signed from Sylvia. He's got no top division experience. Um, they brought a Brazilian actually uh, called uh, Evaldo Netinho. He's played for Varnamo in the past and Geist, but he's never played in Osvenskan. Uh, they've also got, um, I think the big the big signing I'm excited about is Robin Tihi. He was an uh, AFC Oscar student last season and he was at, um, he's an ARK man on loan from ARK, a centre-back. I loved him when he broke through a couple of years ago um, and I really think he could be a big player. So I'm excited to see him back in Osvenskan at 20 years old. Can he, but can he can he pin that defence together? That's a big ask. Um, Freddie Vinst is the club legend. He's the one club man. He will play his 300th game for Varnamo, uh, I think against EF Corp, potentially. He's a key player and captain. Uh, been there for years. Um, and the big signing up front, obviously, is uh, Marcos Antonsen. He joins from Malmo now. He'll be the main man. He was, sorry, not, not from Malmo. He joins from Halmstad. Um, but he's a former Malmo man. Uh, also played for Blackburn Rovers in the past. He's a 30-year-old attacker, and, and all the goals will be relied on for him, I think, to be honest. They've also got Victor Anderson, who, who signed, um, but he he played in the third tier, 29 goals in the third tier. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a big leap. He's played in the fourth tier as well. And uh, a young lad called John Bosco, Samuel Kalu, who their sporting director has described as someone who, uh, you know, um, will take us very far. So he, uh, I don't know much about him. Um, but yeah, as you can see from the squad, they really lack Osvenskan experience. They do. Uh, they've signed an interesting player, Munga Simba from Bran on loan. And he's one of them guys. Do you just feel about there's a. I feel like there's a player in it, if you know what I mean, Jonathan. Mm. I don't know how or who is going to extract it out of him, but he's a ba he's got a very strong left foot. Bran used him on the right hand side and he cut, cut inside. And sometimes I'm like, wow, you could be something special if you really just sort of smarten up a little bit. I don't know whether it will suit him here at Varnamo, but there's something yeah, in the back. Yeah. I've talked about him in the past. When, when he moved to Norway, I think I, I think I mentioned it on a podcast last season that keep an eye out of him. He was incredible in the third tier. Um, mm -hmm. I watched him in a couple of games in the third tier about two years ago. I think it was at Vasseland. And he he's someone I'm really excited to watch. It's just been announced that signing, actually. So um, it was a couple of, I think it was within the last 24 hours, in fact. So um, I've not added him to my database, but I will be doing that. Uh, he's, he's, he's someone that uh, he's young. But if he comes out and breaks through, he could be really good. Um, Oscar Johansson was the top scorer last season. Antonsen's going to need to score goals. Simba is an exciting one, but I just, if I compare them to every other squad in the league, I, I just, I just, I can't see really where, who they're better than. Okay, so you got them down in uh, 16th place. They won the uh, the Super and uh, last year. And uh, the team that came up automatic with them was Gif Sumsval the most northerly side in the Alsvenskan this season by some margin as well. And they are one of the teams that I have a bit of a soft spot for, actually, Jonathan. Um, I do like GIF, and uh, one of my favourite episode titles we've ever had involved them, of course, back in the day. So you've got them, uh, let's see where you've got them predicted. In 13th, you have them predicted. Um, and actually, you have them uh, the highest of the promoted sides. So 
you think they can come up and stay up again, Gif? Um, what's to like about them? And uh, I looked at the transfers and there doesn't seem to be that many ins and outs. Yes, Gif are back. Guess who's back? Gif are back. Um, first time since 2019. We've missed them. They were a regular when we first started the show, weren't they? And then uh, teetered with relegation and eventually went down. I'll never forget one game in, uh, well, it must have been 2019 when the fans were so bored of a match that they started sledging down the, uh, down the terraces. Um, it was snowing so badly behind the away goal that it was covered in snow. And they got on a sledge somehow and started sledging down the terrace during the match. Uh, incredible scenes. It's right up in the north. Uh, I think it's the most northerly club in the league now uh, with Ostersons going down. Um, and yeah, it's really is a tough trip there. You know, clubs won't like going up there. It's very, very uh, cold. Um, I've got them to stay up and I've got them in 13th, like you've said. And I'm going against, it seems like I'm going against the grain a little bit here compared to what other people are saying about them. But I don't, again, unless I'm missing a trick here somewhere, I, I'm a little bit quite high on, on Gibson. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the big issue is the media have got them 15th. So the media think they'll get relegated. Discovery think they'll go down. Um, a lot of people I think they'll go down, as you've mentioned, they're the bookies. The the big problem for them, mostly, I think the negative, start with the negative, Linus Hellenius there, their sort of legend, is out for the season, potentially. Uh, did a, he got a major injury in pre-season, and I think that is a real challenge. 32-year-old, um, been around the block. He was one of the top scorers in the league, you'll remember, about three, four years ago, um, and then got a move to Greece or Cyprus, I think, and then, uh, and then returned. Um, really, really good player. I believe he was one of the top scorers in the in the league, or amongst. He scored quite a few goals last season as well, along with Pontus Engblom. Now Engblom, um, you know, last season got nine goals. Uh, I quite like him. I think he'll lead the line. He, he he potentially could do could do a bit of a job. They've signed a kid called uh, Ronaldo Damus from uh, uh, USL in America. Thirty nine goals in sixty six games in America. They got Brian Clarhout. Um, I'll give a shout out to Brian if he's listening. He was on our podcast about two or three years ago when he was at Omea. Um, and he's now assistant manager at uh, Gisunsvall. So I think some of that recruitment is around them because he's, he's American and, the, you know, this lad's a Haiti international. They've also signed an American called, well, I think he's American, called Forrest Lasso um, from uh, the USL, from Tampa Bay Rowdies. He's a centre-back with probably the best name in the league. Um, sounds like he should be maybe... Ted's know. son. <laughs> yeah, it might be Ted's son or, he, you know, it might be Forrest Gump's, uh, named after Forrest Gump or who knows. But um, Forrest Lasso, a great name, and he's a centre-back. We'll see how he gets on. But... I'll be honest, I like a lot of their signings. I think they've been smart in the uh, in the market. Oscar Lina comes back from uh, Armina Bielefeld to Sweden. He won the title with uh, AIK, if you remember, many years ago before moving to, to Germany. They've managed to get him in goal, uh, 25 years old. I think he he was a top keeper at one point in Osvenskan. And there was a lot of people debated about him. Is he is he you know is he a top top keeper or is he just a decent Osvenskan keeper? Maybe he didn't quite hit the heights when he moved abroad, but he's still, I think, at this level. You know, there was a point at AIK where he was probably maybe top, top three in the league. So coming back, is a, that's big. Um, they've got Alexander Blomqvist and uh, Dennis Olsen at the back who are, who are OK. Um, I really like their loan from another loan from AIK, Saku Liatupa. He used to be at Ajax as a kid. And I think this is the right move for him. He's moved from AIK. He never quite made it AIK, but always excited me when I watched him in, in, in glimpses. I think his personality, maybe he got a bit over, um, overawed at AIK amongst all those talents there. This is a bit more of a, a softer place to be at, you know, and, and I think he'll have a little bit more responsibility and play more. And at 22 years old, I think he could be a breakout player, actually. Um, another former AIK man, Rasmus Lindqvist, he's come back to the league now and he's, um, he's I'll never forget, being in the stadium when uh, Beko Hakan got battered 6-1 by AIK and Lindqvist was on fire that day uh, playing as a left wing back. He's come back to the league, he's 31. I think he'll, he'll add good experience there. Uh, Eric Anderson is um, an interesting player, by the way, Steve. He's 24 years old, and I had I couldn't believe it when I was looking researching this guy because he scored a goal and made his debut uh, for Lance Corona Boys in 2012, and he's 24. <laughs> now you do the math. I was like thinking in my head, is this a, hey, is, is this a typo? I was like, is this a typo or something? Because he's 14, 15, <laughs> and I had to go back on Chantamart and look around, and I was like. He made his debut at 15 for Lanskron in 2012, and he's only 24 now. Um, he's already played 200 games. Uh, he, he left Malmo and then went to Lanskron. Uh, he was the youngest ever player in the Super Etten and goal scorer on his debut. So he's already lived a, one whole career, and he's still got one more left to go, really. Um, he'll be in centre midfield, and I think he's a decent player. 
they've got a young kid called Ludwig Navik as well, who keep an eye out for him. He's an 18 year old centre mid. Uh, they've signed Marcus Berman as well, who used to be at Hammerby as a youth. Um, 23 games, seven goals for Acropolis last season. So, uh, and then Johan Benson as well, 16 games, four goals last season, uh, and he's looked quite good in preseason. So, I think they've got a decent squad. I really like their signings as well. And I'll tell you uh, one I really, really like, and it's an unfortunate name, Joe Corona, on loan from Houston Dynamo. This guy has some pedigree. 23 USA caps. Uh, he's won two CONCACAF Gold Cups. He's won titles in Mexico's first division. He's a very good mid. This is quite a coup of a signing on loan <laughs> for the... I, I'm, I, he's, for me, way too good for GIF. Uh, like, I mean, he's 31 now, so he's... Not, but that's still quite a good age for a midfielder. I think this is this was only this deal was only done two or three days ago. I think that's a heck of a signing, and I do like Illa Tupa when I've seen him as well. Um, Linna is, is a quality option. Lindqvist, I know you're a big fan of him. They've, they've, they've not exactly brought quantity in. Real shame about Hellenius's injury, and that sort of injury can cripple a side with limited resources like Gift. But they, I think they've been really smart. I agree with you, I like what I see. Yeah, and they've got an exciting system. You, you mentioned Corona there. I mean, that that that's got Brian Clark out written all over it. To be honest, that that the American connections he's got, I think that he's tapped into his contacts book for some of these signings because you know this Haiti international who played in USL. You just mentioned Corona there. You know, I can't imagine Sunsfall. I remember Gift Sunsfall in the past when they were in Osvenska, and it was all Spanish, wasn't it? They had the Spanish influence. Now it's the American influence, maybe potentially. Um, Hellenius, obviously, like you said, will be a, a big miss. He got uh, 15 goals last season for them. Uh, Engblom got nine, so. That's a problem, but honestly, I, the three-five-two shape that I've seen of them in preseason, I think there's goals in that team. I think they've got exciting, creative midfielders, like you've just mentioned there. I think their defense is okay. I think they've got the likes of Lindquist at the back who can do a job. Um, and I think Lin is a really, really good goalkeeper. I'm, 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 I'm surprised to see him at, at, at Gibson. So I'm surprised mm. saying they'll go down with the squad. I really am. I, I'm, I agree with you. Fourteenth uh, place, you've got them down for. I'm, I'm with them. Come on, Giff. Let's have a good season. Out the only thing I'd say, only thing I'd just say, Steve, as a, as a caveat there, I think. Oh, they, here we go. Here we go. I just think the one caveat: they've got a light squad. If they get injuries, you know, like mm. Hellenius is out. If they get two or three injuries during the season, I just that that would be a problem. But uh, if they can keep fit, I, I think they can give it a crack. Let's move on to the final promoted team via the playoff. It was uh, Helsingborg. They're back in Alsvenskan, and these guys are a bit like kind of what Arsenal are in Norway. The, the Norwich of Sweden, is it is that fair to call them that, would you say, Jonathan? And, um, well, looking where you've got them in 15th, uh, it looks like they're going to be a bit of a yo-yo again. Well, we had a listener who commented, didn't they, saying don't compare Arlesen to Norwich. I think he was an Ipswich fan. Uh, I can't remember who it is, but if you're listening, thanks a lot for uh, your comment on the on the, on the Twitter and Nordic Football, by the way. I enjoyed that comment. Um, you're going to have to remind me, uh, well, you're talking about promoter teams, right? Yeah, Helsingborg, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got them to go down. I've got them in 15th. Again, I think it will be tight. Um, the only other two teams we've got to talk about after this, obviously, is uh, is Degafors and Barberg boys. Um, but I just think that Helsingborg's squad is a little bit light. And if we're looking at Varberg, if we're comparing them to Varberg, uh, Mialbi, Gifsonsfall and Degafors, I just I just think they're a little bit weaker than, than those teams. Degafors, maybe could go down, um, having lost Edvardsson. But Helsingborg just looked to me a little bit light. I know that they're going to make some more moves. I think they might have even signed someone in the last 24 hours. Um, but just looking at their squad, the, the main man's Anthony van den Herk up front, captain, I think he is now as well. Prolific goal scorer for them. He was uh, incredible last season for them in the Super he, he was He was the man who fired the goals to get them in through that promotion playoff against uh, Halmstad. He's a big, big player, and I think um, he may even get interest from bigger clubs if he does well. Because he's, I think he, he just, I think he sort of didn't expect to stay in Super Etten when he after he had a good season in Osvenska when they got relegated, and didn't really maybe get any concrete offers and stay and stuck around and, and you know he's got his head down in his back. But he did have interest when he got uh, when they got relegated and, and stayed. Uh, a big, big uh, player who's come back. I mean, Gigi, which is back by the way. That's just been announced, I think, today. Um, he obviously, because of the situation again in, in I think, because of in the situation in Russia, um, he's returned. He was their former academy player. I wrote a blog about him on Y Scout a few a while back. Wolves looked at him at one point. A uh, very good young player, but is it enough to keep them up? I'm not sure. I think they're a team that 
I'll say in the 10 to watch, there's a few people, players I'm going to mention in that 10 to watch potentially that they've got. Uh, I'll name one, Joseph Amawako, I think could have a good season. But I just think that they're one of those squads that's kind of like they've got some exciting players, but um, do they have the squad and the, the, the team week in, week out to get the point yeah. to win? In goal, they've got Anders Lindegaard, 37, former Manchester United, of course. Um, you know, in defence, the likes of Volklik Person, Ravi Tsuka, but I think it's a light squad. I just don't see enough there to say I'm confident they'll stay up. Yeah, you've got them second bottom. And uh, is there a problem at this club of like mentality? Um, I, I mentioned before with Arlesson, there's been teams like West Brom, perhaps Norwich, where you're like, you're up and down, you're up and down. And you can, it's like sometimes you get the feeling of, oh, here we go again. And is this a problem with Helsingborg? They, they really try and need to get themselves, historically quite a big club, of course. They really need to try and get themselves established as a proper Arsvenskan club again. Well, Jorgen Lennartsen is the man who's got the job and who took them up. He's um, a solid He's a solid gaffer. I remember him when I was in Sweden. He was at EFK at the time. And I think, by all accounts, he's quite a popular manager. Um, but I think he's quite a conservative manager, to be honest. Um, I think that he will... I don't think they'll be hugely attacking. And and that kind of... I just I don't think they've got a great attack of uh, Van den Herke's side. And I don't think they've got a great defence. And, you know, you need one or the other, really. Sundsvall, I think they've got a decent... Going forward, I think they'll score. Um, you know, you look at that some Mialbi, I think they'll probably keep some clean sheets. Varnamo, I'm not sure about either way, but and, and Helsingborg are similar. You you're right, they're a big club. You know, they they're rivals with Malmo. Uh, and it's a big rivalry that down in the south in Scanner. And I think that um they've got good fans. So maybe maybe this season with fans back in the stadiums, I think what was it, the year before obviously was no fans, wasn't it? So that that probably hampered them a little bit. Uh they've got a defender who's in my tent to watch, who you know, you know patrons will know about. I've talked about him. But I just think that they don't quite have anything that really excites me, unless they make some transfers in, in the window to come. And and also, what worries me is that I think they've got uh, they've they've got good enough young players, Steve, that they might leave in the summer. And that is a problem, isn't it? Because sometimes you want sort of maybe average players who are just kind of all right. But I think that their best players are, are, are youngsters. I think Casper Woodell players like that. And that's always a bit of worry because if they if they go, then it's you know you're really in a bit of trouble. So, um, yeah, I've got them to go down, unfortunately. But they'll be competitive. But, I, you know, they were top scorers in Super Essen last year. But I, I just think they I, I think they might struggle. So, in you've got them in uh, 15th place. Um, 14th, you're predicting GIF Sundsvall. Sorry, 13th, you're predicting GIF. Uh, sorry, uh, Jonathan. In 14th, you've got Degaforge. And... Um, I mean, I, I must admit, I'm a little bit worried about them because, I mean, they nearly went down last year. They've lost their best player. It looks like, to be fair, there have been a lot of ins and outs as well here with Degger Forsch. I'm guessing it's going to be a struggle of a campaign for them. Yes, the media have got them to finish in that um, uh, relegation playoff. I've got them to finish in that relegation playoff. Last season, I finished. I predicted them to finish bottom and um, they, they actually did a lot better than I expected. I, I thought they had a really weak squad last season, but Edvardsen's goals were were good enough to sort of um, fire them to the to sort of safety eventually. Um, so yeah, they they just got out of it in the skin of their teeth. I think on the last day they they beat Ostersunds, who were already down, so that kind of kept them out of that uh, relegation door door trap. Um, I, I just think their squad is very weak uh, with Edvardsen leaving. The, the manager will keep that kind of system, the 3 4 2 1 that we talked about. We broke it down. We did a good analysis. Tobias Solberg, uh, one club man. But if I look at the signings, they, they, they've lost Ismail Diwara, who was a massive stud keeper for them at uh, Sultan Malmo. I really rated him. He did well in the Champions League as well at, at points. Uh, really brilliant keeper for them. For the first half of the season, he was the main man that kept them competitive, really, at the back. They brought in Alfie Whiteman from Tottenham on loan. Um, last season, I, I didn't actually really rate him uh, last season. I think he conceded 24 goals during his loan in 13 games. So they've got him back. So, you know, who knows? They've got a, another guy called Jeff Gall. I don't know if he'll play. But um, if you look at some of the signings, Mukibi's coming from Ostersunds. Uh, I think that's a solid signing, to be fair. He's he's always been quite a solid player for them. Uh, they've got a lad called Joe Giao from Cincinnati. Uh, he's played for Hoffenheim in the past and, and Dortmund. I think the defence is OK. They've kept a lot of their defenders 
and they do like that sort of 3-4-3. They like to attack. I think an exciting one to watch will be Diego Campos. He might be one even for your fantasy team. Costa Rican, uh, formerly of Jerv and Chicago Fire. Um, a lot of talk about him in preseason, and he's a creative player. Daniel Krezic as well comes in from Vibe Boys. I just think with this 3-4-3, who have they got up front? Okay, they brought Dijan Vukovic, who, um, who's got 27 goals for Njorbi in, in 92 games in Super Retin. Nikola Jurjic is 35 now. He joined mid-season and did well, but he's you know he's getting older now. Is he can he can he do a full season and replace Edvardson's 14 goals? Not sure. Bertelson's 34. So, you know, and again, it's it's a light squad, you know. So um they've bought quite a few players from Norby, Rasmus Orkvist as well. There's one or two players in that team that people talk about and say, you know, he could uh they might have some young breakout players like Adam Carlin, maybe 21-year-old, uh Jacob Anderson as well from the Academy, but I just think they're gonna struggle. Yeah, you got him down in 14th there for the playoff spot. Uh, Bertelson's not a bad player for them, I don't think. He, I think he's the captain. He's uh, he's okay on his day, a bit uh, streaky. But, uh, yeah, I, I do have a feeling it could be uh, a tough one for, for Degger Forge. We've got one more team left to preview, and you've got them in 12th place. And I think you were telling me off air that, that this team uh, took you the longest to actually research this year <laughs> due to several uh, ins and outs. And that's the Varberg boys. And looking at their transfers... Uh, this uh, this winter this window uh, it is uh, it's a long long list so uh, yeah twelfth place for Vibeberg tell us about them you know what you get to the like, like for me you, you know you, we do all this research Steve and a lot of I mean I've got to say by the way anyone still listening we a lot of work goes into these podcasts like behind the scenes we do a lot of we put a lot of effort into it. hopefully it shows when you're listening um, and I got to the last one Vibeberg and I thought okay I'm nearly there now and then I looked at their transfers and squad and I was like you're kidding me. <laughs> like you, you want a nice, easy last one just to sort of uh, see you off, and I, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, especially for a team like Vyberg. I mean, they've got nearly 20 midfielders in their squad, Steve. <laughs> it's re- absolutely ridiculous. I, I might even list them all now. There's Kunst, Robin Tramberg, Anton Yilgerback, Noah Johansson, Gustav Bendrick, David Bendrick, Luke LaRue, Ismet Lushaku, Alban Wimbo, Victor Carlson, Andre Bowman, Ellington Jr., Joel Sundstrom, Alexander Johansson, Al- Oliver Alfonsi. Flamwood says Ely and Jaheim Burke, and that's just their midfielders. I mean, it's a massive score. I mean, the, the, the amount of players you can buy on their fantasy, like it's, I mean, they're not going to be lacking uh, for numbers, are they? I mean, they've got enough for three teams. It's, it's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. So you know, doing that, doing them last was like, oh, this is a, this is a, this is a drag. Researching all their players, but to be fair to them, you know, um, to analyze them, obviously I've left them last, but I think they'll finish. Uh, I think they'll be okay. Um, they were tenth last year, and they they did. I mean, they did quite well. They they got the smallest ground in the league, so you know yeah, they've punch, achieved that. Term. They're punching massively above their weight. They shouldn't be anywhere near us. So it's going to be really on, on budget wise. Uh, I, I had a bit of a rant last season, didn't I? Saying that if they finish above EF Core, it's like a scandal. They nearly did. Yeah, they nearly, they nearly did. did. You know, the EF Core saved themselves. Uh, they have got a huge squad. They've lost some good players, but they usually have one or two gems within that sort of fifty man squad. Um, the thing with Joachim Pearson, their manager, who's a sort of Klopp lookalike, very similar look to Klopp, he, he, like, he, he likes to get involved with the recruitment. So I think that's one thing. I think, you know, he, he likes to wheel and deal a bit like maybe Harry Redknapp. He likes that involvement. I think he's actually been linked with bigger clubs, but he didn't want to leave because he wants control of recruitment a bit more. Uh, I think he likes that sort of finding those gems. I don't think he wants to leave it to a, to a sort of a sporting director or whatever. Um, so he's very hands-on in the recruitment. I think that, uh, and that's why they have such a big squad. I think he, I think he likes to rotate the team a lot. Last season, they had so much rotation. You know, no one really is guaranteed game time. They'll rotate as the season goes along, even positionally. Um, I think they've got some, you know, decent signings, as, as I've said. Um, I think defensively, the thing with Varberg is they're quite good defensively. They play five at the back. They tend to play five at the back, and their five at the back is quite, quite established and quite sort of solid. Um, but I think the best, the best player is, is Tashrik Matthews. Am I right in saying? Yeah, but you know what? There's been a bit of um, he's got big potential, but there's been he's been a bit in and out this season, and kind of there's a few question marks about him in preseason. You know, I think mm-hmm. there was rumours he wanted to leave, maybe, or he might be sold, and and uh, he's not had the sort of most stable of preseasons. I think so. That's that's one issue. Obviously, they lost um, Selmani the season before and never really replaced him. Robin Simovic will be relied on for goals. He's a, he's a decent player. Matthews, as you've mentioned, Carlson Ajay as well has played a lot in preseason, uh, and then they've got Rasmus Kronval, um, who could maybe feature a little bit. Uh, Luke Larue, someone I think could could push on. 
Um, he's someone that maybe has been there long enough now. The likes of Des Kunst, he was at AZ Akmar as a youth, and he, he's not bad. Um, but in, honestly, if I if I analyze this squad, I'll be here. We'll be here for another hour, so I, I won't bother. But I think I think I'll, I'll just wrap it up by saying, um, Frederick Anderson, the goal is a decent signing. Uh, he he he's been at Malmo and joins from Orgreet. And then if you look at the mid uh, the defense, and also when you're talking about fantasy, you've got John Burkfeld, Oliver Stanisic, Joachim Lindner. Um, they've signed Oscar Sverison as well from uh, from Hacken. Uh, and Gideon Mensa and Hampus Zacharyson. U- usually the defence does enough for Arbeck to stay in the league. So I think they may struggle. And, and it's a funny thing as well. Um, their manager actually said he wants a season of struggle. He says it's been too comfortable for them, uh, which is funny. And, and the final point I'll just say about them, uh, which gives a little bit of insight into Arbeck, the new signing, Elliton Jr., who's come from uh, Red Bull in Brazil, um, he has really struggled in pre-season. And Pearson said, that he, he, he's really struggled with the intensity of training. He said that the training of Arbeck is very, very intense and it takes a lot of players can't really handle it. In fact, he said, he said uh, when he has joined this team, he's looked a bit tired and he must, be, he must have come in and think, be thinking he's playing a new sport um, because I think the drills they do at Arbeck are completely different to what maybe what he's used to in Brazil. So um, that gives you a little bit of insight. Very, very fit squad, very kind of intensive and um, I think they'll be fine. I watched a few of their games last year and um, interesting little stat here. They had the second most over two and a half goals matches in away games, 10 out of 15. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, they had, actually had quite a decent away record full stop, uh, eighth best in the league. So they, they can, they tend to travel quite well. And uh, yeah, you've got them down in 12th place there and uh, you've got to give some fine 13th, Digger Forge 14th, Helsingborg 15th, Varnamo in uh, 16th and for this section i mean i'm guessing there's not too many um fantasy suggestions here jonathan but i suppose you, you can find the odd gem if you really look closely yeah i mean i'll, I'll wrap it up now uh i just want to give one shout out by the way he's not in my tent to watch so i'm going to say it on this pod montada majed he's a 16 year old he was in their squad last year at 15. if he gets game time he's someone to look out for because he is very very highly rated in sweden <clears throat> a lot of people talking about him but I just don't know if he'll get the game time. 16 year old. Um fantasy, fantasy. Okay, so Varberg, I would look for I would stick to defenders. I would stick with the likes of maybe Burkfeld if you're looking for uh, fantasy options. Um Martinson might be good at four million actually, if he if he starts. I don't know if he's gonna start, but uh, or Anderson at five million, Frederick Anderson maybe. Uh uh who else is there in what there? about Vanden Herk at Helsingborg for seven million? Yeah, I think he'll get goals. Um, he, he's already got goals in his first campaign in, in Osvensk. He did really well, actually, uh, for, for a, a period of time. So I think you're, you're, you're bang on there. That's decent value. It's just, will he get the service? Uh, I think with Djidjevic returning, that's huge. Um, they've also got a, a player called uh, Adam Kide, who keep an eye out for him at, at 5 million. He could maybe be someone who could get some goals. Um, I think Ravi Tsuka at 4 million is really good value uh, for Helsingborg if you're looking at fantasy, potentially. Uh, and also Casper <laughs> Waddell at 4 million. Uh, if you're looking for uh, Varnamo players, <laughs> take your pick. I, I really don't know what to s- predict from them. I, I quite like Ila too for a GIF for 5.5. Yeah, I think Ila too. I think GIF have got a lot of options, actually, in their fantasy team. Corona's not listed yet on there, but I'll be looking out for what his price is. Yeah. De- Degafors, I'm not. I'm really not sure about. But uh, I think if you're looking for players, I, w- I would look at Varber, GIF and uh, Helsingborg, to be honest. Mm. I think there's some value here at GIF in particular. Um, just want to, yeah, link this 4.5, I think is, is, is decent value. Latupa 5.5, uh, Elias Anderson as well, uh, sorry, Eric Anderson, um, and uh, Pontus Engbrum 6.5 is, is decent. He's going he's to be probably their starting forward, so 6.5, you can't go too far wrong. Well, we have reached the end, my friend. Um, you better give us a recap of your final predicted league table here, Jonathan, and, and we can we can finish the pot. Yes, uh, I don't know how we've managed to do this, but I think we've actually gone over last season one, which was which was a beast. Um, bottom of the league, I've got Varnamo. Uh, joining them in relegation is Helsingborg. Degerfors 14th in the uh, relegation playoff. Then I've got Ginsutzval in 13th, Viber Boys 12th, Mialbi 11th, Noor Shopping 10th, Ikor Sirius 9th, Beko Hacken 8th, EFK Jotoburg 7th, Kalmar 6th, Hels- uh, sorry, Elsborg 5th, Hammerby fourth, Eurogarden 
third AIK, second the three Stockholm teams. But top of the tree, champions and champions again, my prediction is Malmo FF. Here we go. Well, that's brilliant. And uh, for anyone who stayed this long, thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate your time. This has been an epically long podcast, like the Lawrence of Arabia podcast episodes. <laughs> and uh, brilliant work from you, Jonathan, as ever. For the 10 to watch, uh, if you're wondering where that is, that is on our Patreon platform this season. So if you want access to that, it's a video. We've got an, a really good video on 10, uh, 10 players to watch in our Svensk and also Elite Serian. But you need to subscribe to our Patreon uh, Chittle Clemson tier for that one. But uh, yeah, that, that about wraps this up finally, Jonathan. Uh, really enjoyed it with you as ever. I'm looking forward to another season this week. Yeah, thanks so much for listening. Hope you got value out of this. Every single team's been analysed, so hopefully you uh, give us a bit of grace on the on the length of the show. Um, I don't think you can get maybe any better information about these teams, so ho- hopefully uh, you've got value there. Um, I would say the patreon.com slash Nordic Football Podcast, you'll get our tens of watch as well. That's an extra sort of half an hour maybe when you've digested this one. Uh, keep listening to it. Obviously, it'll still be relevant during the weeks to come in the season. But I'd love to get your thoughts on uh, our predictions. Who do you agree with? Is there anyone you, you majorly disagree with? Uh, comment on YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, Nordic Football Podcast, or uh, on Twitter at Nordic Football Pod. Or you can tweet me at JF Football, J-F-F-U-T-B-O-L. And I'm really keen as well to hear what you think of our 10 to watches, uh, the format of it, the video. Uh, do I look too nervous? Do you look too nervous, Steve? Actually, you're a bit of a natural on camera, but uh, I'd love to know what you think of the 10 to watch as well. And if there's any players in this show that you want to ask us about, we will be on Patreon doing some uh, player in focuses as we go along. So some of these players we've talked about now, we might they might get sections of their own uh, in the coming weeks on Patreon. So patreon.com slash Nordic Football Podcast. Uh, and thank you so much for listening. The code to join the fantasy is I-I-F-Y-V-U. Get your team in before the deadline this weekend. And let's go. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, take care, everyone. Thanks again. And uh, look forward to... Many more shows with you this year, Jonathan. Goodbye.